गुड मॉर्निंग अर्जुन गुड मॉर्निंग सेल स्टार्ट ओके सो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस मीटिंग नंबर ट्वेंटी मुंबई स्पीकर्स क्लब एंड आई एम दीपक शुक्ला सर्जेंट एट आर्म्स फॉर द टूरिस्ट मीटिंग सो देर इज अ फेमस कोट बाय जैल जिग जैगलर बेसिकली that uh, outstanding people have one thing in common and absolute sense of mission and we all have some mission in life that's why we have joined this amazing club toastmasters has presence in more than 145 countries across the world and do you know what is the mission of toastmasters so let me tell the toastmasters mission toastmasters provide positive and supportive learning experience in which every member is empowered to develop their communication skill and lead up leadership skill which results you helping in improving your personal life and uh, career growth so uh, i'll take you through the instructions for the today's meeting since it's in the uh, online mode i request all the speakers and role bearers to prefix their role to the uh, names i request all the speakers to please uh, do a quick audio and video check up before starting uh, any speaking so that any glitch can be find out i will also request all the speakers to please confirm whether they have started seeing the timer card i will request all the members that please don't use chat box when any speaker is speaking because it disturbs the speaker if you have to give any feedback you can give that feedback in the private mode i will request everyone to i will request everyone uh, to please uh, turn off your mobile or uh, put it in the uh, silent mode before uh, uh, leaving the uh, speaking or joining and speaking you can give the high five or you can use the namaste i'll uh, yeah so uh, this meeting is being recorded and if any speaker has any reservation on being recorded your meeting then please let us know we'll pause the meeting now i am very privileged and honored to introduce the our uh, presiding officer of the day sudha ma'am sudha ma'am over to you good morning everyone thank you so much uh, sir toastmaster deepak i hope you all are now looking forward for an enjoyable uh um, education session along with testing your skills on the uh, evaluation uh, playground so as they say that obviously evaluation or feedback is the breakfast of the champions i also think that it's the desert for the brave because once it's very easy to comment on others how well they have performed but whilst doing that if you are also going to be evaluated by someone else as to how well you did that is going to put you on a tight spot so why not uh, get into the groove soak yourself be as open and as honest as possible and try to stick to the uh, uh, guidelines of the contest the contest is around the corner if you were on any of the groups around you would see one after another so many posters being created because all the clubs are having their contest and we are going to have ours very soon and that's the date slated is around the 16th of october contest requires a lot of preparation as you all know we we are already in the process of getting every a uh, role player together and getting the posters together and so on and so forth uh, but yes 
the most important is getting the participants also ready for the contest. And this is an attempt to do it. And for doing that, we have some amazing uh, distinguished speakers and distinguished Toastmasters to help us through this process. I'm sure we are looking forward for an exciting session. So please be as um, uh, participative as possible because sitting in back benches in this kind of session is not going to help. So put your heart and mind together and go ahead and participate in everything. With that, I would like to introduce now the master of ceremonies. Now, usually in a Toastmasters session, as you all always know, we have a Toastmaster of the day. But today we don't uh, have a typical format of Toastmasters meeting. So we have taken the help of a master of ceremonies. The master of ceremonies is actually the youngest member of our club. But the, the young part definitely doesn't uh, stop her from the learning and taking up uh, opportunities and positions of all kinds. She's an avid reader. She's a great sportsman, and she is also the person who wears the creative hat in the club. So with, with that, let us all put our hands together and welcome the Master of Ceremony, Toastmaster Mehek. Over to you, Toastmaster Mehek. Thank you, Toastmaster Sada. Never stop learning because life never stops teaching. And the speciality about this platform is that we are all here to learn and give ourselves a chance to grow and flourish in the public speaking domain. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and guests. As the master of ceremonies of the meeting, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the Mumbai Speakers Toastmasters Club. Our meeting today is unlike our regular ones. It's going to be an evaluation playground as the theme says. If the title doesn't give you a very clear picture, I bet the structure of the meeting today shall do the job. First, we have our education session, which is going to be conducted by a veteran Toastmaster. Then we shall have a test speaker coming up and an evaluation round by 10 evaluators. That session will be passed on to the general, uh, to the general evaluator, Babu Sir. Uh, finally, we have the evaluation of the entire meeting, which is again conducted by Babu Sir. Not extending my part further, I would like to now introduce the distinguished Toastmaster who is a banker by profession and a storyteller on all the other days. Depending on the time of the day and the type of drink in his hand, this Toastmaster changes himself. He has been on this journey of self-discovery through Toastmasters for eight years and has attained his DDM. The, he is joining us today from Dubai Please help me welcome Toastmaster, uh, distinguished Toastmaster Sudarshan. Thank you very much. Let me start the session by evaluating our MC. Because this is an evaluation playground, right? I can see the look of horror on her face. No, no, don't worry. I'm not going to eviscerate you. I'm not even attempting to try and do anything of that kind. All I'm saying is we are constantly either evaluating or being evaluated. In reality, we are constantly being evaluated whether we like it or not. Even the way we sleep, our better halves have an opinion on that. The amount of blanket space that you take up will be told to you when the time is right. For those of you that's not married and those of you that don't have a relationship where you share a bed with someone, wait for it. It is going to happen. So what I'm trying to convey is evaluations is not a unique event. Evaluation, unlike Toastmasters, happens constantly. As one of my ex bosses used to tell me, Sudarshan, if you choose to come to office in a yellow shirt, green trouser, red tie and a purple hat, and then if people call you a clown, is it your fault or their fault? This, ladies and gentlemen, is what evaluations is all about. We are constantly, at all points in time, opining on something or being opined upon. And this, in Toastmasters, is put in a structure. And what we are going to go through over the next few minutes is a session on what is evaluations in this particular context. 
but you can take this and extrapolate it to anything and everything that you choose to do so let me start by doing something that i absolutely hate which is sharing a slideshow with all of you but i guess the format calls for it so i will do it so my whole session is going to be based on these three r's review reward and respond what does this mean why am i calling it three r's we shall explore so let's first start with why do we evaluate what is the benefit of evaluation so when you are a toastmaster you are called upon to speak whether that's the primary reason why you've joined this program when you speak there is somebody else that takes the effort to listen to you carefully give you feedback which will enhance your abilities to speak further and then you get called upon to evaluate someone and once you do that you enable her or him to do better than what they thought they were doing and this is a virtuous cycle the more you evaluate the more you speak the better you get at this craft and ultimately when you do this in this particular playground called toastmasters you can take the skills that you've learned and apply it to your personal life your professional life your social life and a spiritual life if you have one so this is where this virtuous cycle really benefits each and every one of us so the mantra is very simple you speak you speak some more and you keep speaking every time you speak you seek feedback every time someone speaks you give feedback but what do you do you give feedback to reward you give feedback such that the person wants to come back and talk to you and this is where this becomes a virtuous cycle this can very easily turn into a vicious cycle if i was to go and say when sudha introduced the meeting she didn't do a good job at all khalas finished end end of story the next time she will not call me even if babu tells her no no this guy is a good speaker she will definitely not call me but it is a virtuous cycle because babu saw me speaking somewhere he evaluated me he recommended me i am here speaking today so many of you are listening few of you will like it few of you will absolutely hate it some of you will be indifferent but guess what i will still get that feedback if one of you doesn't like it there is an opportunity for me to improve if two of you like it but you wanted something more that's an opportunity for me to improve and if some of you were indifferent to it that's the best opportunity for me to improve how can i bring them into the fold of at least giving me a patient hearing so this ladies and gentlemen is why we evaluate now in a toastmasters meeting we have a structure there is a speech which has a specific objective whichever be the path there is a specific reason and a rationale why your speech is being delivered so before you review before you become an evaluator read and make yourself completely familiar with the objectives and the guidelines of a speech now if if i take this and put it into a context contest situation what should you do there in a contest situation you don't have the guidelines you don't have the reasons and the rationale for the speech that's when you create something out of what you've listened which means you need to listen very carefully to the title and to the structure of the speech that will tell you what is the speaker trying to communicate what is the speaker's general objective of communicating in a speech because every speech is either to inform or to entertain or to share information sorry inform entertain get you to do something so which means to get an action out of you or to make you feel something so one of these four objectives would be achieved through any of these speeches and that is where you will need to be very careful and attentive to listen to the speaker and say what was the objective and how did the speaker achieve it then the most important in a club evaluation you should always pick up the phone and speak to the speaker at least 5 hours before the meeting ask the speaker the following questions what do you want to achieve out of this speech what experience do you want to have and do you want to give all of us and what are your key strengths and challenges so if i pick up the phone and say speak to deepak because that's the person i can see on screen he might tell me that yaar i have not delivered a speech in 6 months i am very afraid of how i am going to perform 
that's a challenge but you know what i'm going to talk about my childhood that's an area i'm totally familiar with that's a strength so then i know what to look for how to evaluate what should i enhance and what should i ignore if i need to and then this if you finished during the meeting before the meeting you are now prepared to evaluate now what do i do in a contest in a contest you don't get to interact with the speaker but that's not true you actually do get to interact with the speaker by the way the speaker walks up to the stage by the way the speaker shakes hands with the master of ceremonies or the contest master by the way the speaker begins the speech this is an interaction opportunity so when you look at all of that you start creating a mental image of what is the speaker's goal what is the strength and the challenge that the speaker is facing you might not be able to relate to experience but that's something that you will get as you evaluate continuously now at the meeting at the meeting or in the contest i personally follow an oreo approach what's an oreo oreo for those of you that don't know is one of the most popular cream biscuits that goes around in the world i personally don't like it but because of toastmasters i use this as an example what does it have it has a layer on top which is rough coarse pretty much tasteless the biscuit and another layer at the bottom which is also rough coarse and tasteless in between is where the joy sits which is in the form of that delicious sweet cream what does this mean in an evaluation context context you are looking at commending recommending and closing with commendations why do we do that we will delve into it a little uh, later the 3 plus 2 plus 3 or 2 plus 3 plus 3 or 2 plus 4 plus 2 is the math that i follow depending on the speaker i look at what the speech conveyed to me as an individual if i have three points of improvement i will always have three concluding points which will enhance the speaker's ability to speak and in between i will give two specific suggestions which will say okay this was your point of weakness this is way, the way to solve it so the choice is yours but what i want to communicate through this is that you need to have a balance you cannot delve exclusively into praises you cannot delve exclusively into things that you are impressed with nor can you delve into things that are not up to the mark in your opinion now the point is you will need to arrive at this math by your own self there could be a flawless speaker that speaker would have delivered a speech which has absolutely nothing that you can think of as points of improvement you know what that's when you will need to come up with if you were delivering the speech what would you have seen what would you have liked to see and those could then form your recommendations and by recommendations i do not mean things like you should talk loudly your voice is not strong enough those are not recommendations those are opinions an evaluation is very different to an opinion an opinion is what you have an evaluation is where your opinion is coupled with a specific action point which the speaker can take and do something about now i do this i am not saying this is the only way to do it there are multiple ways of organizing your responses what i do is i take a sheet fold it into two i write the positives on one side i write the suggestions on the other side and i put my concluding remarks at the bottom what you don't see here is the opening so when i come to the stage to deliver an evaluation i would open always with something very specific of an analysis of the speech so we will see the evaluation guidelines a little later in the presentation but this helps you organize your thoughts this is by no means your evaluation speech these are bullet points which you will take and put into your evaluation speech at this stage i want to tell you that an evaluation speech is like any other speech it has an opening it has a body it has a conclusion but the difference here is the opening is your analysis of the speech the body is your recommendations and your suggestions and the conclusion is the way in which you motivate the speaker to either do the speech again 
or come back and keep doing more speeches. Now, ultimately, this is the only opportunity in life where you get to speak from your own perspective. What do I mean by that? I mean very simply that elsewhere, your boss doesn't care what you think. Your wife or your girlfriend doesn't care what you think. Your siblings don't care what you think. The only time that somebody cares what you think is when you have the level mic on and you are on stage evaluating a speaker. Therefore, always speak from your perspective. Do not say we saw, do not say they saw, do not say audience did. So the first thing that you talk about is what did you see in the speaker? So if somebody was to do my evaluation, which Babu will do, I'm sure at the end of the meeting, he will talk about the way I was sat on the chair the way my gestures and postures were, the way I was waving and flailing my hands about, did it have any coherence to what I'm saying or did it just go all over the place or did I stick my hands into my pocket and stand there like Amitabh Bachchan standing next to a tree or did I move around, did my face, my body and the whole other communication element come into play in my speech at all or not. Now these things in an online session it becomes even more tricky because you will have to surmise a lot of it based on what you see across the screen. But it is not very difficult. You can still do it. The way someone nods their head, the way the head goes from left to right or up to down, all of that will tell you a lot about how the speaker is visible to you. So one of the things that I specifically talk about is what did I see in the speaker? Some of the other things that I look for is the way the speaker walks up to the lectern or the center of the stage, the way the speaker composes himself or herself right before speaking and whether the speaker smiled during the speech, whether the speaker's eyes emoted during the speech. All of this is the physical aspect of how a speaker speaks. Then you look at the most important element in a speech, the voice, because that's what you hear. And that's what communicates a lot more than everything else. So first and foremost is enunciation, which is very different to pronunciation. Somebody could come and say flat form. And that could be just the way the person speaks. That's not what you're evaluating. But was the speaker able to speak clearly? Was there clarity in the speech? It is not about the type of English. Somebody will say percent, somebody will say percent, somebody will say percentage, doesn't matter. The speaker is enunciating the word that the speaker has chosen clearly or not. Second is the timbre of the voice. What does this mean? If I am talking about a poignant situation in my life, did my voice build that gravitas? Or if I am talking about a very hilarious situation in my life, did my voice communicate that hilarity? That brings it to the next point, which is the variety. I can speak in a monotone like this. Vocal variety is the ability of a speaker to differently experience sound of the speech. Nobody understands what it means. Vocal variety means whether the speech had highs and lows, whether there was fluctuations in the voice. That variety is sometimes put on by speakers needlessly. The speaker is talking about a death in the family and the speaker is going high pitch doesn't help. The speaker is talking about a joyous experience and the speaker is speaking in a very low voice. Doesn't help. So that's something that you need to listen for and communicate. Then of course is the pace and the pause. If a speaker has seven minutes and the speaker finishes the speech in five and a half minutes, that only means that the speaker has run at a speed of 150 words a minute and that doesn't help anybody. You can't understand, absorb anything. But sometimes a speech requires that pace because you are talking about a chase. You are talking about a situation where you are trying to escape something and therefore that pace is in context with the subject matter. Pausing is another very, very vital aspect of every speech and that is something that you need to observe for as an evaluator. What does that mean? If you didn't pause, the speaker would not be able to let the audience absorb the previous statement, just like I paused before I started talking about pause, it created a little bit of curiosity. Maybe some people thought the speaker has lost his chain of thought. Some others thought maybe this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, whatever it could be.
but a pause creates an excitement and that excitement can be capitalized on in the next statement or the next set of statements that you make. So as an evaluator, you need to listen to the speech from this perspective. So when you put on your positives and negatives, you start with physical, then you get to vocal and that's where you will see all this. Then the third and the most meta thing in an evaluation is what did you feel? Did the speaker create an impact in you? For example, if I am talking to you about blood donation or organ donation, did I create that impact and that urge in you to take up that form and fill it right now, right here? Did I create that anger, that joy, that sorrow, that pathos in you? That is the emotion that the speaker is conveying. And how passionate is that speaker? Is the speaker coming across to you saying, this person believes in what he's saying. Some people come and talk about eating good food and eating healthy food. And the speaker is speaking in a tone as if he's reading out a news article. That means passion is lacking. And that lack of passion needs to be communicated. It could just be that the speaker is more focused on the timer, the speaker is more focused on the judge or the evaluator, or maybe somebody is moving around at the back of the auditorium, whatever it is. But passion needs to be communicated clearly. And that can be done only if the speaker is involved in the project or the speech. And therefore, as an evaluator, it is imperative that you look at these aspects. So what you saw, what you heard, what you felt. Now, when you combine all of this, you will realize that your evaluation is now ready. You saw something great, but that could be improved. You heard something fantastic, and this is the way you would have approached it. You felt something, and the title of the speech communicated the feeling right up front. So automatically, you have now zeroed in on the evaluation. One of the key elements of any evaluation is to push the speaker up and get the speaker to a cloud nine situation. Use effective words of praise. What does effective mean? The enemy of effective are words which are platonic. What do I mean by that? If you say the speaker was good, it means nothing. The speaker did a fine job. Nothing. You need to be very specific. The way the speaker approached the stage demonstrated to me that the speaker was in ownership of the space. For the seven minutes, the speaker was talking only to me. And that to me, ladies and gentlemen, is what a speaker's role is when you come to speak on the stage. So the words of praise need to be very, very precise, very effective and does not cannot be whitewash words, which is which is generic in nature, which is what brings me to the next point. Be very, very specific. If you have three points of commendation, you be very, very clear on what are those three points. The speaker's choice of words to communicate the pathos in the situation was so appropriate that every word resonated with me. That is a specific feedback. A generic feedback is the speaker's vocabulary was excellent and communicated his thoughts. That is very generic. So when you talk about what it was very specifically, the speaker gets to know, yes, this reached me. Much like if, we, if you go for a stand up show and the joke is not landing, it is because the joke is generic. When the joke is very specific, everyone rolls with laughter. Always be encouraging because one of the primary objectives of an evaluation is to get the speaker to come back second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time. So be encouraging. Even if the speaker forgot the script, even if the speaker has stopped speaking in the middle, what you need to talk about is how the speaker at least till that point performed and why the speaker can go further from there. So I have been in contests where the test speaker just froze because the contest organizers got speakers from somewhere who probably didn't prepare well or just forgot on the occasion and we had to evaluate. So the only way to do that is to get the speaker to come out of that shell and say that today was not your day. But guess what? Today was your day because you came here 
and you had the courage to go through till where you went with what you could and that to me is the hallmark of a speaker who is raring to go yes today can be forgotten but i would recommend don't forget remember this and ensure that you never emulate this so that kind of therefore becomes for the speaker a tool to use to come back and speak more one of the things that i have seen a lot of evaluators do is becoming a brutal ben what's a brutal ben you were not prepared you did not consult your mentor you did not communicate your thoughts properly now this is needlessly brutal needlessly aggressive even if you didn't like the speech for example i remember that i had delivered a speech in a club on becoming vegan and the virtues of vegetarianism and the general evaluator came up and said our speaker number 2 does not know anything protein is available only through meat and our speaker was speaking about things which are not correct not clear etc etc do you think i ever went back to that club i actually did to go and do a general evaluation on that particular individual as well but the point i am trying to make is it creates needless friction and especially in a contest if you do this judges will mark you down and therefore it is of no use to do this the other thing and the most common thing that everybody does is becoming a rear and rosy what's a rear and rosy the speaker came the speaker talked about his childhood where he was flying a kite on the roof of his building and he fell down and broke his leg habibi i have already heard what you are saying i don't need you as an evaluator to repeat what the speaker said just talk about the way the speech was repeating the speech or recapping the speech is only and only recommended if there is something that you are going to demonstrate and that can come in your commendations or recommendations but i personally strongly dis- discourage that please don't do it reruns take away time from the 3 minutes that you have the other one is white washing and this is again something that most people do who have not taken time to jot down points what's a white wash really a white wash really is somebody who says the opening was great the body was great the conclusion was great the speech was great the speaker was great everything was great thank you bye bye now that when it, when you do you will get a big zero if i was the judge because ultimately we want to see the mechanics of what the speech was every speech has a different style each speech has different wheels within wheels which are moving and therefore you need to ensure that you are at least touching upon one or two things these things if you do it will definitely detract from the quality of your evaluation some more things that you shouldn't be doing do not nag nag means i have told you so many times i told you so these are things which don't help Simil- especially if you know the speaker similarly if you are going on and on and on about something that doesn't help at all you made a point you communicated to the speaker if you still want to talk to the speaker talk to them offline the other big thing there is a but and it is always big and it is always behind don't use the word but when you use the word but you have taken away from all that you have said so let me give you an example the speaker's story was so relatable his trip to mathiran reminded me of my school days trip to mathiran and therefore i was transported into that verdant mountain side but finished so all the good things that you said the moment you said but the speaker and the audience is now waiting for the axe to fall and therefore if at all you have to take the speaker from top to down you can replace the word but with something different yes brijesh you have a question you have to unmute yeah subhashan uh, thank you i uh, just had a question you know like how do you replace but with uh... yeah i was just coming to that yeah okay so there are multiple ways to replace saying but one of the ways that i do is to put myself in the situation and say that the speaker's story about his trip to mathiran was so relatable if i were to do this i would have focused on the pony ride first and the train ride later something of that kind 
So instead of saying but, you demonstrate with an example of what would you have done. Ultimately, like I said, an evaluation is your perspective and doesn't need to be right or wrong, but it is just a perspective at a given point in time that you are doing. Similar is the use of the word should. The speaker should try and enunciate clearly. The speaker should reduce the speed. You know, these are things when you say should, you kind of become prescriptive like a doctor. That's not your role as an evaluator. Your role as an evaluator is to present an opinion. And that opinion is again coming from your perspective. The space of the speech was such that I as a listener could not keep track of the stories. There were six stories which came at me at the speed of a bullet train. If it were up to me, I would have reduced it down to three stories and I would have taken my time to develop the characters in each of the stories. So that could be a way of presenting the should in the form of an opinion. But I've been talking about opinions. The next one is never dispute an opinion. Like for example, the speech that I made about becoming vegan. Don't worry, I'm not a vegan, but that particular speech and that particular time of the time of my life, I was trying to think of becoming a vegan. And the speaker that evaluated me came and vehemently opposed. And the speaker was disputing the content of my speech and not the speech itself. So this is something that you should strongly avoid. Never dispute opinions, never challenge content. It is not your job to do that. Your job is to tell us what did you see, what did you listen, what did you observe. That's all that you are talking about. Do not get into opinions of any kind. There is another strange thing that a lot of evaluators do. You try to open with a quote, you try to close with a quote, you try to bring in Shakespeare and Socrates and whatnot. You are not there in those three minutes to take away from the speaker. You are there to push the speaker up. You are there to inflate their egos. Do not try to steal their limelight. You might be a thorough in speaking English, but that is not the point to demonstrate that. The whole objective of evaluation is to get the speaker to come back again and again and again. So don't ever try to steal the speaker's limelight. Another thing that I absolutely detest is when somebody comes on stage and says, the audience felt this. Dude, you're no one to talk about me. So don't talk to the crowd about what I felt. Talk about you. I felt this. I heard this. I saw this. But don't talk to the audience on behalf of them. We felt this. We all were attentively listening. No, there were six of them on their phone sending WhatsApp messages to their workplace or whatever else. So no, don't speak about the audience. Speak only about what you are experiencing at that point in time. Never ever opine on the content. I've already said this. I'll say it again. Never opine on the content. Some of the things that you should do. An evaluation is always I. Whenever an evaluation starts with a we, I switch off. Because evaluation is not about we. It's only about me and I. And this is the only time, like I said, where your opinion counts. So always use I phrases and give your reactions, your opinions. I felt this. I thought, saw this. Yes, Akshay, please go ahead. Uh, yes, Sudarshan. So you mentioned about don't speak about the audience, but you also said that, uh, you know, uh, uh, evaluation is like a performance. Mm -hmm. So does, uh, does your evaluation should be engaging to the audience as well? Or should we just, it sh should? No, it has to be, like I said, it is a speech. Every speech has to engage the audience. So you cannot have an evaluation which is not engaging to the audience. What are you demonstrating in an evaluation? If you are evaluating, you are demonstrating to the audience your ability to analyze, your ability to commend, your ability to recommend, and your ability to give a firm conclusion, which is a set of actionables to the speaker. So it has to engage the audience. But what I'm saying is, don't come on stage and say, today's test speaker, made all of us feel the need to go out and work out in the gym. You don't know. Maybe uh, Bridges didn't feel that. Maybe I didn't feel that. Maybe Babu thinks working out in the gym is a waste of time. So don't opine on our behalf. 
that's what i'm trying to say i saw another hand up but it has gone down now so if there is any more questions i'm happy to take otherwise i'll proceed further try and always be ashwin uh, yeah. sorry i was just suggesting maybe we can keep the questions answers to the end sure no problem that's okay so that we don't uh, lose the flow yeah yeah another thing that i find with a lot of evaluators is that you are a lot of them are very very stern they look as if they have come to perform an atom splitting they they talk as if they are performing heart surgery or brain surgery you are ultimately delivering a speech and the more pleasant you are the better it would be and the trick that i follow is before i go on stage i just smile like a stupid person into the mirror i if i don't have a mirror i take out my phone and i keep smiling if you smile 3 to 4 times when you walk up on stage you will smile and when you smile you have embraced the audience immediately a smile conveys confidence a smile conveys preparedness a smile also conveys a little bit of vulnerability and those are the attributes of bringing a diverse group of audience members together and it is important that you do that because if you don't smile you will come across as somebody who's come to rip a new one for the speaker and that's not your objective in the first place the second thing that i recommend very very strongly for any speech any time online or offline please drink a glass of water before you go on stage make sure your lips are wet because you know what happens when we speak for about 2 minutes our lips and tongue go dry and when that happens you go like this or you swallow and both of which look extremely ugly to the audience and more importantly it always breaks your chain of thought so it is important that you hydrate yourself well and if it's a woman apply a little bit of gloss if it's a man just make sure you sip enough water before you go on stage the other advantage is if it is a physical meeting auditoriums are generally very very cold and if you have had a full glass of water after 6 minutes or so you will want to go to the bathroom so you will finish your speech on time so you should use that as a trick to make sure that you are well prepared and last but not least recommendations need to come as if you are sitting outside your college on the katta with your hand around your friend shoulder and telling him abe gadhe aise mat kar now that is important because with your friend you can take liberties now this is a person that may or may not be your friend but you want to get that person to open up to you so you have to be tactful the speaker could use a little help on grammar i would recommend his evaluator to help the speaker structure the speech better the next time so what you've done is you've taken out your shoe and hit him on the head saying your grammar is awful but you've also put the onus on the mentor so you've not been very rough and rude saying that grammar was awful the grammar is not something that comes naturally to a lot of people and therefore it is going to happen the way it is happening but it is important that you are tactful always finish on a high note and this does not mean i look forward to future speeches from our speaker please that is the worst way to conclude an evaluation i look forward to your future speeches all the best for your future speeches he is a toastmaster she is a toastmaster they paid their membership they will do their speeches you don't need to tell them that but if you can conclude the speech by saying today's speech was like driving on the streets of mumbai after rains when the journey ends you don't remember the potholes what you remember is the fact that you got a chance to go on that journey and today our speaker took us on that beautiful journey why even if it went from kolivada to siam i don't care because i enjoyed that ride please keep doing this more often something of that kind gives the speaker the motivation to come back even if the speech was awful if the speech was great then again you need to tell the speaker that you have left me at this high and now i am flying like a kite for the next 6 hours and that will encourage the speaker a lot more than saying that it was a fantastic speech i look forward to your future speeches 
everybody knows that future speeches are going to come you don't need to say that this is specific to meetings once you've finished your evaluation always fill out the sheet in the pathways program the sheet is very minimal but whatever you've written if you share it with the speaker you will make sure that the speaker becomes a friend of yours more importantly the speaker will reach out and follow up with you saying why did you write what you wrote that helps if possible sometime also talk to the audience informally to find out if it, your evaluation connected with them or not this just helps you become a better evaluator now when it comes to an evaluation contest this is the mark sheet you get 40% marks for analysis 30% for recommendation 15% for the way you speak and 15% for your summation now the reason why i put this up here is when you are in a contest always make sure that you give enough weight to analysis but don't do it to the extent that you don't have any time to do anything else just yesterday i had an evaluator who evaluated my speech in a new club that i went to that speaker for the for about 2 minutes went on and on about how my language was good how the content was relatable everything great everything nice and the speaker had 30 seconds to give me recommendations and close the evaluation needless to say that the speaker didn't get placed in the contest so this is where you will lose the plot so you need to remember by by analysis what i mean is all that we spoke about what did you see what did you hear what did you feel those things are your analysis i saw a confident speaker i heard a voice tone which communicated the importance of the message clearly i felt motivated to take up the challenge and do what the speaker recommended that's your analysis my recommendation to the speaker if the speaker can deepen his or her voice if the speaker can walk from the left of the stage to the right instead of walking from the front to the back that would have communicated the transition of time a little better i felt very strongly about what the speaker said but i would like to say this see i used the word but here and that's detracting from what i was previously trying to say this is something that happens to the best of us and i am by no means the best at any stretch but what i'm trying to say is this is where you will need to observe what you say very carefully the technique is got 15% weight what is the technique mean is your technique friendly is your speed pitch pace rhythm something that is amenable to an evaluation that's your technique and your summation and i would strongly recommend that when you come to your summary you actually use the words and in summary i would like to say that today's speech was an object lesson in xyz and therefore i would like to commend the speaker for doing what he did or what she did this helps you mentally switch to that mode and the judges know okay this is where it is at at this point in time what i do is i do about 1 minute and 20 seconds of analysis i do about a minute of recommendations and about 40 seconds of summation and why do i allocate 40 seconds to summation very simply summation is like lighting an agarbatti why is it important a incense stick burns for about 15 to 20 minutes but the fragrance can linger for up to 8 hours every good speaker leaves the stage with words that are still ringing in the ears of the audience and judges and therefore your summation needs to be strong powerful and poignant that is the only way that your scores will be good because the rest of your speech gets you only 50% marks your summation gets you the rest by that what i mean is the summation lingers in the minds of judges and they therefore give you higher marks if your summation was strong so this ladies and gentlemen concludes my presentation and i shall stop sharing my screen and if there is time i will take questions now thank you yes 
अनम्यूट अनम्यूट सुधा या थैंक यू सो मच सुदर्शन सो बेसिकली माय क्वेश्चन इज टुवर्ड्स द ओपनिंग पार्ट एंड द एनालिसिस पार्ट आई एम वन ऑफ दोज पीपल हु does become the what do you call what do we call rerun rosy mm. sometimes and uh, i try to talk about the speech because i like to set context to it uh, uh, very difficult to uh, have a very thin line between setting the context and analyzing so how do you kind of do that because when you're there you you also feel that you know you need to bring the audience into what you're speaking and then you start talking about it and then yes time obviously flows off very fast so correct so when you uh, first of all as you correctly pointed out when you are recapping the speech you've lost precious time out of the 3 minutes maybe you lost 15 20 30 seconds maybe and that is almost 10% of your time that you have so what i recommend very strongly is if at all you have to recall something from the speech so let's take for example a speech Uh, which uh, talks about somebody overcoming a very stressful situation in life somebody lost his or her job and the person learned lessons from that and when the speaker has spoken about that and you comment you want to communicate to the audience that when the speaker told me that his boss called him to say sudarshan i'm sorry but your journey with standard chartered bank is over that if you want to repeat that you might want to do it in a different way you would probably say that that particular phone call with the speaker spoke about rang bell rang a bell in my ears as well i have been there i have seen that experience and today i would like to say that the way the speaker communicated that particular phone call was exactly the way i would have done it it made me feel the fear of receiving that dreaded phone call which says you are laid off so you have recalled the speech but you have not gone into the details of what the conversation was so that kind of helps the other element is that the audience has already heard the speaker so you don't need to set the context for the audience the context is there you are riding off of that context so it is like diving into the pool from a 10 feet tall springboard so the springboard has been set for you so you have to say that this speech communicated to me in so many ways every element the opening and that dreaded phone call was something that i relate to completely and today the speaker did thorough justice to the way this call should have gone through so that kind of communicates to the audience without you taking out time out of your evaluation to say the words that the speaker spoke about so sometimes very rarely you need to rerun but you don't need to necessarily repeat what the speaker has said okay uh, the other question i had was about uh, conclusion when you're talking mm-hmm. about 40 minute 40 seconds for conclusion uh, it's it's nice if you have a good speech uh, i think you're safe but what do you do when you actually have not seen a good speech and need Perfect. to conclude do you re- really need to be pointing that out again and wishing them all the best again which which is what you say is not a good way to do it but then you know you need no. to leave a high point. so let's take for example if today's presentation of mine had gone completely or i maybe i was not prepared maybe the slides were all haphazard and i plowed through this session some way or the other for example and if babu was to evaluate me there will be not much to say about the speech at all right there will be nothing to say about the evaluation he will come and say today we had an education session the education speaker came and talked to us about this however this is where i would like to demonstrate a few things and the conclusion would be something like my recommendation for an education speaker is that these are the three points i would want you to focus on because i can see a great speaker in you all you need is a little bit of polishing and that polishing can be availed through your mentors through your club partners etc and this is where you will be able to shine so you are concluding but you are concluding with a set of recommendation because unfortunately that's where it will be a 3 2 3 so it will be three ana- analysis points two commendations and again three 
recommendation. So that's how it will have to be because uh, not all speeches are going to connect with you and therefore you will have to take that call as to what you want to tell the speaker. Sure. Thank you. That's all from me. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Otherwise, we can conclude this session here. I think everybody is. Is there anything on chat? No, right? No. They become master evaluators now. They don't have any questions. <laughs> Looks like it. Um, Toastmaster Akshay has something. Yeah. And Toastmaster. Please. Sure. Yes, uh, so Sudarshan, uh, so apologies, my laptop that I'm shut down, so I could not complete my question there. Uh, my question was that no if, uh, so you mentioned, uh, do not speak on behalf of the audience, uh, and it should also be uh, like a performance. So should we be engaging the audience as well, or should we di speak directly to the speaker? Uh, okay, great question. Audience engagement is a must, but in an evaluation, never do tricks that you do in a normal speech don't ask questions to the audience did you enjoy the speech if nobody responds just like when i said if there are questions and nobody responded you fall flat on your face so don't do that the other thing that you don't do is don't talk about you did this you did this you are evaluating for the benefit of the crowd so you come up and say that Today we got to witness a speech from a speaker and I'm going to evaluate that particular speaker for the benefit of all of us. And you don't start by saying my target speaker. There is nobody who comes with a target painted on their head. So there is no target speaker. So yeah. never use that ugly word mm -hmm. called target speaker. Everybody is a speaker. <laughs> that person has come and spoken today and you engage with the audience on behalf of the speaker through your evaluation. So that's all you do. So audience engagement comes out of what you speak. Speaker engagement comes out of the way you look. When you are speaking in a physical auditorium, you turn around and look at the speaker and say, our speaker resplendent in that red shirt with a white tie took us on a journey, which is the journey of my life or something of that kind. So it is that way that you engage. You don't need to say, uh, you Akshay, Ask me this question, which made me think for such a long time. The moment I do that, I'm putting you on the spot, which nobody likes. Yes, Vijesh. Yeah. Uh, so, Sudarshan, we, we talked a lot about, you know, how we should be speaking up. Uh, since I'm a beginner, uh, I, I just wanted to take a step back when uh, the speaker is actually speaking, you know, and I am to jot down points. One, hmm. what should I, uh, like what thought process should I keep in mind? I understand, you know, uh, dividing it into positives, negatives and having a conclusion. Or uh, what if I feel that, you know, there are eight, nine positives, but I only want to allocate one minute, 20 seconds. Which positive should I choose? Which negative should I choose? Great question. So let me ask you this. Do you watch cricket or football? Uh, yeah. Which sport do you follow? Yeah, so I follow both. I'm sure uh, you have an opinion on the stroke that Virat Kohli plays or the catch that is taken by the wicket keeper. You mm -hmm. can probably write an essay on that. Yeah. You observed it for three seconds and you will be able to say, Yaar, umpire ne galat LBW de de, wo stump pe jai nahi raha tha. you will be able to say that, right? Yeah. And this yeah. is what we do. So you're not a beginner. First of all, none of us is a beginner. We are all evaluators from the time we are born. So first of all, get rid of this notion that I'm a beginner or not. Now, when you are listening to a speaker, you will listen with no thought process. You just listen for the sake of listening. At that point in time, if you start thinking or putting on your layer of intelligence on top of what the speaker is saying, you will go wrong. Because you will miss the wood for the trees. So what you do is you listen and you just write down keywords that you like. So you don't even break eye contact. You write down few bullet points of things that you like. After the speech is over, you have a few seconds to ruminate over what you've heard and then you write down the positives and the areas of improvement very very quickly so positives should not be more than three or four areas of improvement should not be more than three or four if you find more than that that means the speech has fallen flat and therefore then your evaluation is totally different and if you have to decide on priority look at what created maximum impact to you not necessarily what the audience wants to listen. What did you like? 
because ultimately an evaluation is your opinion so you talk about what you liked don't try to think about what would sudha like therefore i should speak that first doesn't help you nor will she accept that this is what she should be liking right so that's why it is yes ajay uh darshan you said uh, in any evaluation we should follow three three steps opening body and conclusion but sometimes during this less space less time uh, we should sometimes jumble i mean instead of opening we can we always uh, do a body and conclusion and opening i mean it is a jumble i mean you cannot follow the instructions opening body and it's always like 3 uh, 2 1 or 2 3 1 like that way so how okay so opening body and conclusion what i mean is that the speech needs to have all of this so i have done an evaluation where i went up on stage and said ladies and gentlemen thank you for having me i have nothing to say there is absolutely nothing that i can say to the speaker it will be like adding a cup full of water to an ocean and that ocean of knowledge is right in front of us in the form of speaker so and so i have done that and that was my conclusion that i opened the speech with and this is something that we do at times sometimes it could be a speech which was which has hit the ball out of the park and you have nothing to add but even then as an evaluator you can have one recommendation or maybe a recommendation which is also a commendation but it, you need to have that structure to your speech so you will open with your conclusion and you will then have a body which will say that i was overawed by this speech this speech had so much to take that i have written four pages of notes and i can go on for another two hours this speech is going to remain in my memory for times to come and the power of the speaker was such that the words that he used or she used and the way it was spoken all of it covered me like a warm blanket on a cold night and i am enjoying this feeling right now it is impossible for me to do a structured evaluation but all i would attempt to do is to tell the speaker keep doing what you are doing and the next time when you do this if you can look into my eyes i will feel that connection even more and therefore to you mr speaker i would say you have done a great job you have moved me and i am raring to go out of this auditorium to do exactly what you said thank you very much for that and ladies and gentlemen this is an ocean from which you can drink and keep drinking if you don't you're missing out on something thank you the moment you do something like that the speaker is on cloud 9 and you've done justice to your evaluation thank you guys i think that's my time thanks for having me and hopefully this was a useful session thank you so much uh, dtm sudarshan that was an absolute i know mind blowing session i don't i really don't have words for it the last the lines that you used uh, it'll be like me putting what a cup of water into a knowledge <laughs> <laughs> an ocean of knowledge so that will be exactly like like that uh, but yeah i i can say that uh, all of us had something to pick up to learn um some improvements here and there and personally i was uh, re thinking my evaluations that i have given to people and correcting myself here and there i'm i'm like the white wash really so i i <laughs> i keep i keep only giving out positives and don't focus a lot of on, on negatives because i think that others may feel bad so yes but i now i know that there is there is a lot of scope for improvement um and yes i will be working on it and i'm pretty sure others uh, may think the same thing yeah thank you very much moving on to uh actually for today yes sorry, sorry to interrupt uh, toastmaster uh, mehak i believe yes. our uh, distinguished toastmaster is like you know having a meeting so he is is uh, fine to continue however i think we'll just share the certificate of appreciation for him so okay. if we i'll just share my screen for that yeah it's a working day in dubai right? yeah. or yeah. are you you're working uh, okay i'm working today thank you very much for this really enjoyed the session and hopefully we'll do it more often thank you
Sudarshan, personal thanks uh, from me for taking up this invitation and coming here and, uh, you know, absolutely uh, enticing us to the field of evaluation because sometimes evaluation does become a very boring uh, activity. I mean, everybody wants to participate in the ISC, but evaluation, they think, you know, what is there? But you have opened up a totally different uh, perspective to how you can do an evaluation in a very uh, uh, typical Toastmaster speech style, you know, like putting all the ingredients into uh, in, an evaluation. And yes, of course, it comes with practice. Uh, it comes with more you coming on the stage and doing those evaluations and perfecting not only the art of evaluation and also the speech. So I think uh, it is it is a learning uh, for all of us. Uh, thank you once again for uh, uh, coming here and sharing your uh, pearls of wisdom. Uh, really appreciate it and looking forward to seeing you more often. I believe you do uh, hop into the neighborhood, even though virtually very often. So you can come and join us as well for some of the meetings. Sure. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Would be my pleasure. Thank you so much. Babu sir, would you like to say a few words before uh, we say a goodbye and get on to the playground? Yeah, thanks, uh, Toastmaster Sudha. Yeah, the only thing I'd like to say is that much as I would like to believe that I have been in Toastmasters for a long time and I've done several evaluations uh, over the past so many years, this was like the first day of my class in college. And I think I got to learn so many different aspects of evaluation. In fact, some of which I've been personally guilty of, like uh, at least the one where he said the target speaker. And I think I have used that quite often in my evaluations. And I think you're very right in pointing that out to us. And also the, the mention about hydrating. Yes, I used to go dry after a minute and then I would sip water and then suddenly lose my train of thought. So I think you have delved into the whole uh, aspect of evaluation in so much of depth, I think that there is a takeaway for all of us. For each one of us, maybe uh, it's a different aspect to take home. But I think you have provided that to each and every one of us. And I think uh, I can only say that, uh, as uh, Sudha said, we would like to have you uh, more often uh, to hear your pearls of wisdom. So uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you can uh, be along with us for as much as time as possible if you don't have any constraints of time. I'm just waiting for my Uber to come. So it should be here in about five minutes. So I have five more minutes. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I we can move on with the meeting. Uh, yes, please. Yes. OK, so um, moving on, I would like to introduce the timer of the meeting today. Uh, for this role, we have Toastmaster Ch uh, Chetan. Um, Toastmaster Chetan, are you spotlighting? Yeah, thanks Toastmaster Mahek and yes. uh, good afternoon everyone. So as a speaker, I'll be helping speakers to express their thoughts within allotted time limits. My duty is to prepare uh, to the time prepared speeches. Uh, and today we don't have table topics, but we have speech evolutions and education sessions during the meeting. Uh, to help me in performing my role, I have this set of three cards, color cards. So the green cards indicates qualifying time for your speeches. Uh, for the yellow card indicates target time for your speech. The red card indicates maximum time allotted to you. For uh, for prepared speeches, we have five to seven minutes allotted. Uh, allocated. I'll show green card at the at five minutes, yellow card at six minutes, and the red card at seven minutes. For prepared speeches, uh, we have the grace period of 30 minutes on either side of the time limits. I'll be presenting the time report when called upon by the Toastmaster of the day. Yeah, over to you, Toastmaster Mike. Thank you, Toastmaster Chetan. This is a lovely, uh, crisp uh, uh, guidelines for the timing. Um, introducing the speaker of the day, uh, we have Toastmaster Rakesh uh, as our test speaker. Um, Toastmaster Rakesh? Yeah, hi, Toastmaster. Yes, hi. Yep. hi. Um, so before you go on with your speech, um, would you like a game of two, two, two truths and a lie? Two truths and a lie. Okay, no yeah. problem. 
So, uh, do you know how the game works? Or yes, I have okay. to say two truths and one lie. And one lie, and we have to guess yeah. which one it is. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. So two truths. Um, two truths and lie. Okay. I was always a rank holder right from right from my school days until now. Um, I'm currently the managing director of the company where I'm in. Number three, um, I speak very badly. Any guesses? It's a lie. Two truths and one lie, or two lies yeah. and one truth. Two. That's up to you <laughs> to decide. First is a lie, and another two, uh, the remaining two are true. Can I? Okay. Yes, Sudama. I please. think the first is the truth and the other two are lies. Okay, I so, think yes. is the lie and the other two are the truth. Correct. Yeah, Sudama is right. The last two, last two are lies, but but anyway, the last one it depends on everybody's perception here. So it's perception based. So that's why it can be a truth or a lie. Okay. <laughs> that is fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, over to you, Master Rakesh. Okay. All the best. Oh. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen. Oh, sorry, sure. Rakesh. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Should I begin? Okay. Yes. So, present speaker, general, general, general evaluator, and my distinguished evaluators and Toastmasters. Today, I, Toastmaster Rakesh, standing the risk of regurgitating what Toastmaster Sudarshan has already touched upon, which is to be a fantastic evaluator and, and the, touching upon the nuances on how to carry out an effective evaluation. I'm going to introduce my topic of speech, which is somewhat similar to what he has said, which is introduction to vocal variety and body language. So to begin with, uh, today I'm going to give a speech to introduce myself and the speech is going to sound very monotonous. So let me begin. Wait, what? I don't think you guys signed up for Toastmasters to listen to some mundane and boring speaker and that too on a Sunday morning. How many of us have crafted brilliant contents in our speeches and have yet been critiqued for the way we deliver? All our efforts of designing the perfect speech content, structuring it appropriately and using the right idiomatic expressions have fizzled out as we don't bring in variety in our expression and don't respond bodily with our content. In short, we fail to pivot during our speeches and accurately leach the inflection points during our speech. I would like to quote a famous English quote that resonates with all of us that reads, let thy speech be better than silence or be silent. So quickly getting to the details, what are the wherewithals that one needs to possess for being a vocally varied speaker? So as the name suggests, uh, the term vocal variety relates to the way we speak and can be broken down basically into several elements, some of which are volume, that is the loudness of our voice, the pitch, basically the rise, the fall, the pace, the rate at which we speak, pauses, is there silence in our speeches, resonance or timbre, or quality of tone or tone color, notation, whether there is variance basically in our voice quality. Some of the ways to achieve this would be basically to speak from the diaphragm. A very interesting concept, isn't it? Most of us would feel that, you know, we should use our vocal cords and larynx uh, uh, quite, quite more, uh, you know, basically to generate the perfect combination of clarity and sound. But to much of everyone's surprise, speech volume and the ability to project your voice is controlled in a very effective manner, not by your vocal cords, but by your diaphragm. Some of you who are new to this word, the diaphragm is basically a dome-shaped sheet of muscle that sits uh, you know, beneath our lungs and expands and contracts when we breathe, or in layman's terms, a respiratory muscle. Second point is give yourself the permission to speak louder. By this, we do not mean that you should force yourself to be a loudspeaker. Our beliefs are immensely powerful and can be the first step to challenge or question them. 
So go inside and ask yourself, am I speaking louder and what I should do? If the answer is yes, then by all means go for it. If not, then you may want to seek help from a CBT or cognitive behavior therapist to see what is holding you back and work with them to dissolve the blockage before proceeding further. If possible, try to hire a, a voice coach or singing teacher maybe, will help in adjusting the rhythm of your tone and also improve voice modulation and you'll be on your road to becoming a great speaker. Some of the common mistakes that you would want to avoid uh, would be to go on the extremes. That is speaking too quietly, speaking too loudly, speaking in a monotonous tone, dropping off volume at the end of each sentence, causing the audience to miss critical information and this could defeat the intended purpose of the speech. So please be wary of these. Just as a head and a tail are two sides of the same coin and complement one another, a speech without effective body language is incomplete. Working on body language can have an everlasting impression on the way you are perceived, not only as a speaker, but also as a person. So how do we generate some power plays during our speeches? First, strike a powerful pose. Sit straight with your shoulders back or stand, uh, whichever position you're comfortable with, uh, with your shoulders back and feet shoulder width apart. Place your hands on either side of the body so you can easily make hand gestures at will. Eye contact, most important. I can't stress how important this aspect is in coming across as a powerful speaker. Maintain the gaze with your audience is of paramount importance for delivering hallmark speeches. As this gives you the power to see if your audience is keenly listening to you and you can always read their facial expressions to see if they're interested, bored, angry, happy, and so on, and thereby alter your speech for feedback. Hand movements and gestures. Movements, movements, movements. I can't stress how important it is to articulate your words with sign and appropriate body language. Marry emotions with perfectly coordinated hand gestures. For example, expand your hands to depict something large. Shrink it to depict something small. Bend your fingers inwards to ask a question such as why, what, or who. But don't overdo these as you want to look like Shashi Tharoor on screen and not a mimicry cartoon artist. Physical movements. While hand movements play a vital role to connect with speech Emo with emotions, being a very mobile speaker when on stage also adds the midas touch. One should stroll around side to side to generate curiosity in the audience. Doesn't mean you stroll around every 30 seconds, else you seem like a pendulum. Do it every change with every change in topic so that the audience stays connected through the duration of the speech. So friends, these are some of the ways that you can blend your speeches with powerful verbal and body language tactics to ensure that you're not only engaged with your audience, but also the audience is equally engaged with you. And finally, I would like to end the speech with a famous quote from Winston Churchill, which says, a good speech must be like a woman's skirt, long enough to cover the subject, but short enough to create interest. So arousal is the key word. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmaster Rakesh. That was very interesting. And I like, I love the, the ending. Yes. Um, now we have the actual part of the of today's meeting. Um, before I hand it over to Toastmaster Babu, who will who is the uh, chief evaluator today. Uh, Toastmaster Babu, if you would like a game of two truths and a lie. Uh, you're on mute. Sir. Oh, you want me to lie early in the morning? Oh, <laughs> it's a tough job, actually. Okay. I think I am one of the busiest persons these days in Toastmasters. I am leading a nice, quiet, and peaceful retired life. I am indeed very passionate about Toastmasters and that's why I took up this challenge this morning of being a master evaluator. Now, I myself don't know which is a lie and which is the truth. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear the first one. Can you just tell, repeat the first one, please? Pardon? He's extremely busy these days in Toastmasters. Toastmasters. I think all are truth. <laughs> all are truth. 
Sir, sir, did you actually no, lie? No, there is there is one where where I said Second is peaceful and retired these days, uh, uh, virtually yeah. doing nothing, and I think that's a big lie. No, that's connected because, to the other truths. Yes, yes. <laughs> so. So, so I, I would say that there's been a partial truth and a partial lie in, in all of those. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that was a good exercise for my brains, uh, for whatever it was. <laughs> you thoroughly <laughs> confused us with your intent and purpose. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. So shall we get on with the, uh, uh, the evaluations? Uh, yes, are we going yes. to have uh, somebody who's coordinating that or you want me to uh, get on the uh, evaluators? Um, so, Mahek, are you going to do it or uh, you? Actually, based on the timeline that I've received, uh, you so, can do it. Uh, if, if it does yeah, so basically, yeah. I think we need to, we have the breakout rooms. Breakout rooms. Yeah. Definitely. So oh, I'll okay. leave uh, Toastmaster Bridges since she is going to be the first evaluator and the remaining uh, nine evaluators, I'll put them in the breakout room. And uh, timer will have to set five minutes for them to prepare for the evaluation, including Bridges. So we can probably okay. have everyone five minutes in the okay. main room. We yes. all can finish and then move the others. So that way everybody, okay. I mean, that's how the contest is usually done. That's what I'm just trying to get a flavor. And I have- Yeah, I'd here. rather somebody, uh, maybe the Zoom master or Madam Sudha, because then I'll be focused on the evaluations. So moving into the breakout rooms, bringing them one by one, uh, checking the audio video and things like that, if someone could do that. Um, okay, Vishal, Vishal. Are, sorry, Vishal, are you participating? Uh, no, so I'll be the Zoom master. I can facilitate this. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you participate, I want I want uh, you to participate. Everyone to participate actually. Can if, as long as you can do a double hatting or something like that. I mean, Sa can also be managed by uh, Deepak, right? Deepak, can you also do it when you're in the? Or room? Vishal can come at the end then once if, the end, if he has yeah. done this. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Or you want, I can be the Zoom master. You can give me the uh, rights to sharing rights and all. The co-host. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one more question is, uh, do you all have the, uh, the ballot, the evaluation ballot, which you will be getting at the time of evaluation contest? I'll just share it on the uh, chat. Please open it. And that's the criteria on which you will be actually rated upon. Okay. So please refer that as well as you're preparing. Yep. Um, I am mute. Are you muted? No, I just want to confirm everybody knows that that is what is going to be the criteria yeah. guidance for you. Yeah, uh, so the, uh, I'm not able to see the uh, card. Card as in, yeah, I'm just giving you. Yeah, yeah, what you said that you will put it on the chat. Puja, the first criteria is we want your video off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I put it up for you guys. You can open up and uh, see the criteria as well. So has the five minutes started? I didn't get a green on that. Five minutes started, guys? Um, yes, it's 12.25, so we can have it till 12.30. Yes, okay. okay. Just uh, the timer then can move everyone inside. So I'll start my notes now. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Meg, you have co-host rights now. Yeah, I'll put everybody in the breakout room except uh, the first evaluator, right? After five minutes. Okay. I think if you're participating, you can also take this five minutes for preparing. Or Vishal as well. We'll decide who can, when, how you can come. But participate is my my reach out here. So the, I had just one question. Uh, so I was just referring to the card you shared. Uh, so are we supposed to also provide a quantitative score while evaluating? Uh, But this is uh, like so this for is the evaluator. It's just an idea. So you will have 
you will have 40 marks uh, uh, given to analytical quality that is how clear and focused you are in your evaluation okay, your okay. recommendations your don't get confused with what you saw that is not mm -hmm. that's your piece here your speech is going to be evaluated on these criteria got it got it okay yeah so, so that if I have understood this correctly, these these are all evaluators' uh, judgmental uh, criteria, is it? Yes. So, yes. so the so the judges will be evaluating on this criteria all the evaluators. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So this is the criteria. So this is more of a ballot thing where the judges will be evaluating the evaluators. But okay. I'm trying to tell you this is the guidance for them to evaluate you, so you can get a preview to it in terms of how they look for, what they look for. Got it, thank you. Okay. Uh, just one interruption. Did we get to know the timing of the speech for the benefit of the evaluators? It is six minutes, 36 seconds. Okay. Twelve thirty. Let's start. Mahek, if you can just.
should we start is 12:32 yeah mahak yeah i'll put it all in the break. other than the speaker yeah i think you can then move everyone to the breakout room so only um babu sir uh, vishal um the first evaluator and the speaker have to be here rest of rest everybody will be in the breakout room correct right? timer also right timer also yeah timer yes, also yeah. and sa also right deepak deepak are you participating or is sa uh, no sorry okay so then yeah sa can also remain here okay raghav you raghav there? can also remain no yeah. now we also i don't think is participating the contest they have somebody in the breakout room watching whether they are writing notes or not but maybe we can do away with that but remember in the contest after 5 minutes nobody gets to use the pen uh sorry i am not participating uh, i'm just okay so you can also yeah, perfect yeah. yeah so you can also mehak or he can also be out then oh there are okay. two breakout rooms there okay um who is samsung m um... he is a guest yeah, he is a guest okay okay yeah. okay dilip john guest Can I share my screen and show the timing? Am I audible? Um. Yeah. Just a minute. I'm okay. Just evaluate or turn me in the. Okay. breakout room how do i do that uh yeah you can proceed okay start Hey, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Chetan, can you just hold on? Uh, sure. Yeah. So, uh, we we'll be starting with the evaluation right away, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, sure. I I just do a audio video check, uh, and then we can start. So, uh, I I am audible and yes. visible, right? Yes. Sure, Chetan. We can start then. Okay. I love the way uh, how Toastmaster Rakesh enlightened me with a uh, usage of verbal as well as a uh, body language uh, in amplifying the impact of prepared speeches. Very uh, Rakesh very nicely structured his speech, uh, highlighting on different uh, topics uh, on how vocal as well as body language aspects can be utilized. Uh, the icing on cake was he not only spoke about it uh, he also demonstrated uh, uh, all the uh, bullet points uh, by changing his pace uh, tone of voice by uh, providing us all the hand gestures and showcasing how that helps in uh, increasing the impact of the speech uh, just a couple of places i felt rakesh while uh, showcasing hand gestures i lost the touch of your hands uh, probably because camera was not able to cover that aspect uh, and i believe uh, a demonstration prior to speech would have uh, taken care of that uh, adding any other recommendation uh, i believe would be uh, adding a glass of water to the ocean of knowledge you provided us with uh art i would like to conclude uh, uh by applauding you for uh, concluding your speech in a, with a very interesting quote uh or the it was a very interesting quote and that uh left me uh, you know uh, 
stuck to your entire speech like every time in future uh that will act as a cue for me uh you know to actually remember all the points you covered uh in your speech and which will help me prepare my uh, speeches in a better way uh thank you toastmaster rakesh i i conclude yeah um does master british i'll be sending you to the breakout room mahak uh, sorry yeah. i believe i think uh, once the evaluator uh, can can he not sit for other evaluators uh, i don't know um, babu, babu sir, sir is here yeah yeah you can you can i can okay you can since uh, you have done yours you can always listen yeah and the idea of selecting the first position was <laughs> <laughs> very smart okay uh, then you you will be getting a notification for the breakout room just decline it if it gives you that option yeah sure yeah so we bring in the next candidate right second evaluator yeah should be toastmaster tanvay i believe yes babu sir on your go i'll <laughs> yeah i think you can Toshmata Tanmay is here. Hey, hi, Vishal. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Uh, so, Toshmata Chetan, if you can share the. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Tanmay, you're good to go. Sure. Yeah. so good afternoon everyone uh, talking about the speech a very good start i would say uh, i mean how he referred to sudarshan sir's speech and then slowly you know he shifted the guest to his own uh, speech objective uh, a wonderful way to connect with the audience uh, i mean uh, he uh, broke down the entire story line into small chunks and explained each of those chunks with uh, relative examples uh, with what we can relate to uh another thing i would like to address here is uh, like the body language uh, the way he brought in emotions different emotions while uh, explaining different story, uh, points <laughs> there was a point uh, wherein uh, i was trying to enact whatever he was trying to do uh, i kept the analysis uh, side uh, to, uh, to the other side and i was trying to enact what he is trying to do so that that was uh, that was the intensity of the speech that uh, we reached and uh, i was able to connect with it uh to uh and uh, he wonderfully concluded the session by uh, saying the quote that you no know, a good speech is uh, like a skirt uh, the longer it is uh, it covers the object and i kind of uh, uh, related to, to it as well uh, i would like to conclude it by saying you know uh, ravi your speech was long enough to you know cover the objective of the speech and uh, it was enticing enough to you know uh, get uh, i mean we all were hooked to the session yeah that's it thank you very much thank you thank you uh nasty put then my uh babu sir again on your go and I'll... I'll have the next one. Next is um, 
Just give me 30 seconds. What you can do is give me a standard 30 seconds. Okay. In between. Okay. So I'll just. Yes. Okay, yes. Do I need to uh, test my, is Babu sir okay? Can I start? Just give me some indication. I have no idea. Yeah. We can uh, yeah. hear you and see you. Yeah. Okay. Babu sir, you're good to go? Or you want? Yes, yes. Okay. We can start. <clears throat> good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters, guests, and in particular, our speaker, Toastmaster Rakesh. Vocal variety and body language. Isn't that almost 80% of an effective public speaking criteria? And Rakesh actually touched upon that very deeply and very accurately for the convenience of all of us who are pursuing this journey. He actually brought us to a point where he set the context beautifully. He also made us realize the purpose of his speech was to elaborate on these two aspects of his speech. He attracted, question, he attracted the attention of the audience with a question saying that, are you not here to listen to good speeches or just you're going to be dealing with monotony of speeches? That was a good tactic. Great vocabulary, great sprinklers throughout the speech, wherein there was a use of power play a Medas touch, Shashi Tarur, being a pendulum. And also he elaborated about, he also took the help of some amazing quotes like, let thy speech be better than silence, else be silent. I'm not coming to the last quote that he mentioned because he left us almost giggling in our, in our own chairs. So what did he say? He did bring us even to a scientific approach of how you should manage your vocal cords and manage your diaphragm and even compare it to a music or an audio therapy that a person actually goes through when you're learning music and expanding your vocal cords to, uh, to be able to sing in the range of sa to the end. So this speech was an amazing speech, a great uh, information provider. I felt that it was a little monotonous. We felt like we were sitting in the back benches of a college and was listening to a professor talking about vocal variety and body language. I would have liked him to do walk the talk. Why, don't, why didn't you show us some examples where you actually used body language and vocal variety or maybe even choose a topic to elaborate that. There was no title, Rakesh. Maybe there were, that would have been a good focus for you to probably get the attention of the audience. So as they say, an ounce of practice is generally worth more than a ton of theory. I would have liked you to bring a context of practical knowledge and combined with the theory. Otherwise, an excellent speech. Kudos and all the very best. Thank you. Yeah, we'll give Babu so 30 seconds before we call on the next one, next speaker.
Okay. वंडरफुल स्पीच दैट आर स्पीकर राकेश प्रोवाइडेड and it was quite the topic that he chose was very relevant and it was a good follow up that continued from a, a brilliant session provided by a uh, uh, distinguished host master sudarshan his the topic he introduced was a uh, voice uh, voice clarity which is very relevant today because it has limit, it, it it gets limited focus and attention by people who want to pursue this art of public speaking but it is very powerful but it is a very powerful thing because it it that what it, it is something that makes people feel makes people realize the impact of it so what i liked about our our, our speaker rakesh here is the way he exuded confidence you know the way he was sitting uh, it was supposed to make started with you know two truths and a lie he, he mentioned about you know one being him being the md of a company it i was little bit uh, confused whether it's a lie or it's a truth because the level of confidence that he had the, the body posture that he presented himself in so it it's it, it spoke about you know his confidence in the topic and the content the kind of uh, courage that he has to take up this uh, challenge of presenting a good speech what i also felt is that uh, it, it, i was amazed by the kind of depth and structure he was able to build into his topic you know the, the all the all the elements that goes into any any kind of building voice clarity for any particular speech uh, however what i would like it to be more impact impactful was that if he would have you know brought more passion into that into his speech he if would have provided more examples uh, in if i would have been in his case i would have you know actually when he was talking about body language or when he was talking about uh, 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 you know, different kind of voice clarity. I would have provided more examples in terms of how I would have actually got up, you know, moved around when he was talking about that we should be, you know, uh, you know, move around and present that speech. It is difficult in a virtual setup, but that would have actually made it more impactful in in terms of his speech. What uh, what I f- felt is that uh, uh, the the if. there was a little more impact that was created if if there is was more passion that he could have brought into his speech it would have made it more uh, you know it would have pro- uh, encouraged me to take those steps in but nonetheless the 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 content is really uh, uh, you know helpful in understanding you know what goes into building that voice clarity as well as you know what are the nitty gritties that goes into creating any particular speech uh, so uh, great Uh, great session speaker uh, great session by speaker rakesh thank you yeah Yes, ma'am. Toastmaster Sarika is next. Yeah, Should I start? Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Today, I have been actually getting the privilege to evaluate my speaker, uh, Rakesh. Um, 
the start of the speech he started the speech with a question so first i thought actually it would be monotonous and mundane but that was actually a question so it was a good start uh, the structure of the speech he used diaphragm the loud the posing part and the purpose of his speech was actually how to deliver a good speech so i think he completely covered that um, aspects really well the speech was very informative um it it had covered all about clarity voice modulation eye contact in fact all the aspects about what a good speech can become uh, he also added uh, the se sense of humor in that so he made an analogy about shashi tharoor and uh, that was a good sense of humor and especially when you are engaging with the audience humor really uh, attracts and you know if you are lost in the speech it gets you back that uh, to the speech so that was a good part he also uh, i think what i loved the most about his speech was his vocabulary he actually sounded like shashi tharoor uh, so uh, there was a good usage of vocabulary that he used uh, and the end part the end was really quite catchy and it really stuck in my mind and i'm sure that it would have stuck on everybody's mind that because it was a good comparison about uh, and a good usage of that um on the on the clarity it was very clear face modulate uh, voice modulation very clear vocal variety quite clear hand movements the hand movements were used very well audience awareness it was quite engaging he was definitely in his comfort level and it could easily speak he wasn't nervous at all it wasn't sounding nervous at all and it definitely attracted interest now my recommendation to rakesh i have uh, uh, maybe two recommendations that i would like to suggest uh, in in the entire speech when you are listening such type of speech when you are delivering it can be a bit monotonous because you are actually talking about the same thing about hand movement gestures and all so i think a personal story would have actually made a bit difference is what my suggestion is or maybe a some personal touch in the um, in the speech would have actually engaged the audience more and uh, the start was good but i think the start could have been really very thrilling i mean you know and he speaks so well he's really a flawless speaker and the way he could have you know just came with a bang and got everybody's attention like the end was so i think the end was uh, really very catchy but the start could have been better and uh, a personal story was missing but overall rakesh you are a fabulous speaker and uh, really look forward to your more and more speeches uh, nobody would say like you know you are just a new joiner or uh, it was just amazing you know and, and i really look forward to your more and more speeches from you good luck to you rakesh over to you master of ceremony thank you Thank you, Dr. Master Sarika. I'll just give Prabhu sir thirty seconds. May I? Aren't you participating? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Do you want to participate? Then I can take over, or I don't know how does it work. Or let Vishal finish, and then he can probably take you on. Is that okay? Oh uh, yeah, actually, I missed one part of his speech. So this, oh, okay. his speech. <laughs> so I'm not sure how I'll be able to value it. Yes, Babu sir. And um, next is Toastmaster Ajay. Yeah, Toastmaster Ajay is here. Please confirm if I am visible and audible. Yes, you are. Okay. Can I proceed? Yes. Ah, uh, today's speaker, uh, Toastmaster Rakesh, you are deliver very good speech. In terms of my opinion, you had uh, covered. Uh, Two smart suggestions. Entire thirty minutes descriptions in five to seven minutes. You cover entirely in uh, uh, in a systematical number one, number two, number three. Everything is fabulous up, uh, regarding the uh, 
evaluations, how to contest evaluations, how to give feedbacks, how to give weaknesses, I mean, uh, provide weaknesses or the strength. I like your uh, flow of speech, your vocal variety is very good. Your hand gestures is, uh, is up to the mark. And the one thing I like about your uh, fluent speech, you are flawless, the word you used. And sometimes you also give uh, some words, it's very uh, related to the speech contest. The weakness, I uh, according to me, it's like uh, you did not pause in between. So uh, there is any uh, uh, speech, you should always pause because this makes the uh, audience engaged in between. And uh, my opinion uh, about your speech is that you choose the word correctly and, uh, and you describe everything in terms of the speech evaluation and it is flawless and uh, yeah these are things put into me and over to you thank you thank you just master Rajay. yeah yeah uh, next, we have Toastmaster Shreyans. Uh, yeah, Toastmaster Shreyans is here. Am I audible and visible? Yes, you are. Okay. Some speeches get over us as soon as it get delivered. Some speeches leaves us a lingering effect on you much after it get delivered. Fellow Toastmaster and dear guest, today we hear one of such speech from Toastmaster Rakesh. Okay. Uh, the first thing I notice is your former clothes with clothes with a tie. And your aesthetic background which seems very professional connected to your audience you did it in a variety of ways and as a speaker it is our responsibility to reduce the distance which was revolving around a uh, body gestures and vocal variety and for that at the First thing I noticed, uh, because because of online mode, I cannot comment much about your eye contact of addressing each and other every audience. But I confirm that in offline mode, it will be it will be very well done. Okay. So second thing, uh, the grammar in grammar part, you nailed it. The words which I found very very good usage were regurgitate, fizzled out, timber, head and tail. And you also took some biological references like larynx and diaphragm. Not only you took the references, but you also elaborated it very well, like uh, diaphragm. And you also explained it that what, what is the part of our, uh, what is the role of diaphragm in our body? Now, co coming on to the next part, the interest part. Your speech was very intriguing. My eyes were glued to your Zoom window and were waiting for the answer and what will come next. Every good speech can be made better and every better speech can be made best. So I have a suggestion. I have some suggestion for you in order to improve your speech. Number one suggestion is the uses of pauses. They say that good music happens when the drop or the beats come between the verses. Give a pause and give a listener the time to think and digest the points. Next, uh, I would like to, uh, I would have heard more about what happens if we overdo the gestures? Does it make, make us nervous or what happens? Uh, how, to, how to tackle it? And last but not the least, 
uh, I would I would say that you should have stressed more on your vocal variety. Uh, overall, it was a skin scintillating speech. Message was very clean, clear, and straightforward. On the scale from one to ten, you are eleven. I learned a lot of things from your speech, and I will make sure that I will implement this in my future meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Shyam. Yes. Yeah. Next is Toastmaster Ashwin. Yeah, Toastmaster Ashwin is here. Can I start, or I need to wait? You can start. Okay, so Toastmaster Rakesh, I think you met your objective of uh, giving a very good informative speech on vocal variety and body language. I like the way you started. You started with the question, and when you say wait, what I was, I was listening to you very cautiously. Um, the way you presented your speech was really what your objective was. You were, you were very clear with your voice and you used uh, variant in your voice when you said that you should have low frequency or high volume. You were actually speaking very high when you were saying high volume or when you say you talk flat, you were lowering your volume. So I, I like that a lot, right? And your hand gestures, your body movement, the way you delivered the speech was very energetic. I like the energy in you. A lot of things I liked, um, also the way you dressed up, uh, your body language was really good. Few things uh, I would like to recommend is like, uh, since it was a body language, you could have stand up and given your speech. Uh, maybe you can see how your leg position is. That also helps uh, when you are trying to explain uh, body language, right? And I think in the beginning, uh, you started with the question, but you forgot to greet the audience or the guest over here, right? Uh, overall, it was really good. The way you started and the way you ended was very beautiful. You used a quote which made everyone smile. Um, and uh, uh, a few other suggestions I can give is like maybe very minor is uh, use of so you are repeating so very often, which I think was not in the right place. Overall, I was very motivated by your uh, body language and vocal variety speech. I am really looking forward for change, for making some changes in myself after hearing your speech. Thank you. Over to you, Chris. Yeah. Next, next up, we have Toastmaster Puja. Who's that? Uh, Toastmaster Puja, Puja Singh. Yeah, she's here. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, you're audible and listening. Okay. So, what's the drill, uh, Mehek? Should I go ahead and deliver? My yes, uh, once the timer starts sharing, yeah. <clears throat> you can start. 
So first of all, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I think it was a fantastic day today. Personally, I learned a lot. Uh, in spite of being a, a complete fresher uh, to this forum, I think today's day was very, very enriching. And uh, Rakesh's, uh, you know, speech was just the right icing on the cake, right? We, have, we had gone through what is the uh, uh, evaluation, how to really do a good job in evaluation. And then Rakesh sort of helped in terms of drilling down one aspect of that entire uh, uh, process. Some of the thing, um, in summary, I mean, uh, I want to first start by saying that the entire uh, speech which Rakesh delivered, it was very well, uh, you know, uh, uh, it sort of covered the topic uh, uh, in the right depth and breadth. I think the entire uh, content was very, very meaty. There are three things which stood out for me. The first thing, I really loved the way he was using his vocal, uh, you know, var variety. I mean, he was actually demonstrating what is vocal variety through the course of his presentation. Uh, that was uh, really, really engaging and it was very, very good. Uh, second thing is that his entire uh, posture, the way he was using his body language, his hand gestures, etc. to communicate uh, or to land his point, that was also something which I found very, very, uh, you know, good. And I, I, I felt that even the uh, uh, choice which he made in terms of using a quote to close his uh, uh, presentation was also uh, very uh, uh, apt. I think uh, uh, three areas which I which came to my mind, uh, you know, which can probably help Rakesh to make the presentation better. First, I realized that, um, you know, at certain uh, stages, he was using a bit complicated words, right, which was just uh, hampering the flow of uh, the understanding as a, as a listener. When I was listening to the content, probably it could be just me, but somehow, you know, uh, the words uh, were, I think, could have been simpler in order to really make the message land faster. Uh, so that was that is one area which I would recommend that in case if he wants to choose the word, probably choose a right mix, which could be very well received by the audience. Second thing, I think um, uh, the pauses in the posture, which was required, uh, was uh, uh, missing a bit. I think the speed at which he was delivering the speed was a bit faster for me. I think uh, that's another area which he can leverage in terms of, uh, uh, you know, making his speech much more uh, impactful. Uh, I think in summary, what I would like to say is that uh, the content and the meat of the presentation was very, uh, very good. I think just by incorporating, uh, you know, uh, simplifying the word usage, as well as, you know, using the right posture and right pauses, the, it would have just enabled the switch, uh, you know, become much more impactful uh, for Rakesh. So, yeah, that's that's where I would like to close. Thank you, Toastmaster Puja. Thank you. Thank you. Another last Toastmaster Dharendra. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Toastmaster Dharendra is here. Yes, just master there. You can go. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters, uh, distinguished speakers, and all my uh, uh, speakers who have marked their presence on this call. Uh, I will be evaluating uh, Toastmasters Rakesh speech today and uh, Toastmaster Rakesh, uh, your uh, speech for today was uh, was extremely flamboyant. It was flawless and I was it was I was very uh, uh, amazed to hear your views on Various topic. It was also very encouraging for me and very insightful for me uh, to learn and inculcate those uh, uh, minute little uh, details that you brought in through your speech and can actually help me also uh, 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 deliver better speeches. And with respect to uh, 
um, and uh, with your posture and poise, uh, they were just uh, very well uh, delivered. Uh, your gestures were, you were very, were not sure. The, your enunciation voice clarity was spot on. Uh, and the pace and and the pace in which you delivered your speech was very well uh, timed. what i felt uh, for the entire uh, uh, duration of your speech is was it was very impactful and it was delivered with a lot of uh, passion and compose and and i look forward and that's it, I mean, from my side. Thank you for the evaluation. Thank you, Toastmaster Dhirindri. Um, if I'm not wrong, we have Toastmaster Vishal who's going with his evaluation. I mean, I can go, but in the interest of time, because even uh, Babu sir also has like yeah. you know, about good 15, 20 minutes. So, I okay, so we move on. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Babu, so you're okay with that, right? Or you want, again, I can say you'll have to do one more after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I'm uh, already up to it. Uh, if if you would like to have a go at it, yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm game. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me just uh, make it very quickly because I was like, you know, thinking this as well uh, at the top of my mind. I would like to kind of uh, give an analogy of this comparing to a cricket match. Imagine there's a T20 cricket match versus India versus Pakistan. And Pakistan has already made 200 runs over there. And then we have India coming. We see Virendra Sehwag, aka our speaker, Rakesh, all decked up in a formal shirt and tie, ready to ge get, get there on the pitch and face the Pakistani bowlers. And oh my, looking at Toastmaster Rakesh, you would know he would be like really aggressive, just like Virendra Sehwag. And he would just keep batting and like keeps hitting shots like the fours and the sixes. So uh, comparing that with his speech, of course, when we know that Toastmaster Rakesh is going to come and give a speech, we know with his personality, where the kind of confidence that he exuberates, we know it's going to be like some sort of a, a good uh, action-packed speech that he's going to deliver. And he indeed did that. I mean, coming with uh, uh, the start of the uh, session today was the uh, the evaluation session that we had. I think Rakesh sort of uh, cut it down in a T20 format, giving his, his snapshot of the various do's and don'ts of how you would uh, give uh, like, you know, the evaluation. I think in my opinion, like uh, Rakesh, as we know, like extremely confidently he delivered his speech, the use of his words, and even certain vocabulary that he's used that's also like really good. And the only one couple of things that I found was as a few people mentioned is like, you know, the, the pauses. Of course, Virinda Seva is known for hitting four and sixes, but maybe sometimes taking like, you know, those one or two runs is would have really helped kind of like slow him down as well. And also giving a few personal uh, examples, maybe just one or two, not even personal, maybe just examples would have really made it uh, taken a speech to the next level because people normally relate with examples whenever you're giving a very theoretical speech, right? So yeah, I mean, uh, these were the only suggestions from uh, my side and in my opinion, Overall, uh, Toastmaster Rakesh, like uh, fabulous speech. And we know you have like a really amazing potential. And yeah, like kudos to you for delivering such a such a great speech. And with that, I hand it over back to our MOC, Toastmaster Mehek. Thank you, Toastmaster Vishal. Uh, I think we're done with all evaluations and I'll pass it on to Babu sir if he's ready. <laughs> Uh, maybe you can do a little bit of round of truth and dare till the time Babu sir is ready. Yes, yes, sure. Yeah. Mm. I need to present time report also. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yes. you can you can do that. Yes. Okay. So let me share my screen. Yeah, actually everyone is uh, qualified for uh, today's session. So as you can see on the screen, uh, 
topic. Uh, so most of the time was taken by uh, Tosmata Sarika, and then uh, the like second last was uh, Tosmata Suda. Apart from that, like everyone like taken less than three minutes. So like, I have this habit of speaking a lot. <laughs> yeah, I would not go over to each of the timings uh, like in the interest of time. But you can just have a glance on the timings. Great, thank you. But thank you. Uh, but having said that, Sarika, in a contest, if you don't give justice to the full time, then you're actually not using yeah from well. So I think the art is to finish it at exactly three fifteen, and uh, and move out. Otherwise, if you have a two forty or two two forty five, then you're not doing justice. Seriously, you have more time to speak. So I think it's it's good and bad. I would like. Yeah, I would also like to ask Rakesh. Rakesh, how was it evaluating eleven people? <laughs> no, it, it was it was good, and I think I sort of agree with almost whatever all of you said. And these are the sort of introspection which I did at my end as well, and it sort of matched it up. But uh, yeah, thank you for the comments. It was great, great experience. Okay, I think uh, I seem to be ready. I don't know. I think till I start <laughs> speaking, I wouldn't know. <laughs> because right now it's all there i have to pull it out in sequence so, okay right so shall i begin my audible yes okay first of all i must uh, applaud tosmas rakesh for a wonderful speech in fact much in line with what we heard uh, just the hour before, and uh, he also had a reference to uh, DTM Sudarshan. So that was uh, much like being in the moment. Uh, it also exhibited the fact that you were not bogged down with your own speech and you were much aware of what's happening around you. So uh, it was really nice and I quite liked, or rather I would echo all the sentiments, all the good things that uh, were mentioned about your speech and your speaking by all the evaluators. So kudos to you. And I think let's give uh, our test speaker a huge round of applause, like we always do in an evaluation contest. Uh, great, great show. OK, let, let's uh, start at the beginning. And uh, we start with Toastmaster Brijesh. I think he was the first evaluator. He started off very well, much in line with what he had learned from DTM Sudarshan about giving a good opening, saying that he much loved the way that the speaker started and went on to highlight some of the wonderful aspects of the speech, uh, talking about the structure and uh, the way that the speaker demonstrated uh, whatever were the contents uh, by way of hand gestures body language, etc. He gave a good recommendation where he spoke about not being able to uh, see the hand gestures of the speaker because perhaps there was a bit of a problem with the adjustment of the camera. That was one recommendation that he had. But while that might have been a valid recommendation, I would have loved to hear uh, recommendations relating more to the content, the structure, and the various other skills that you bring to speaking. Uh, some of the other speakers touched about word usage, humor, etc. So while this might have been a relevant recommendation, I would have expected the evaluator to be able to go into the in-depth aspect of his recommendations and at least come up with a couple more recommendations for the speaker. So I think there he fell, fell a bit short. And then while he did not really summarize the speech, in fact, I would have liked uh, you to summarize by repeating whatever you said by way of a commendation and a recommendation. In fact, you were oscillating between commendation, recommendation, commendation, and going back and forth rather than trying to conclude your evaluation. So my recommendation to you here would be, be have a compact evaluation like uh, DTM Sudarshan uh, said, 
break up your evaluation into three parts where you're done with your commendation, move on. Move on to your recommendation, you're done with it, you're ready now for the summary. Don't keep repeating. Don't keep, don't come out with another new recommendation or with another new commendation in your summary. Uh, that way you'll get lost. So just be precise. If you have two, two plus two, that's enough. In fact, uh, while uh, DTM Sudarshan talked of three, two, and one, sometimes it's a little difficult for you. If you don't have, just stick to whatever you have and try to summarize it like a speech, as he has mentioned. So that is uh, as far as, far as uh, Toastmaster Brijesh is concerned. Let's move on to Toastmaster uh, Tanmay. Again, a good opening in the way he opened his own evaluation by saying it was a good start. And he spoke about the body of the speech where it was connected well with the specific objectives. It was structured well. And he also mentioned how the speech had an impact on himself. So those were some of the good points that he brought out in his commendation. As far as the recommendations were concerned, frankly, uh, I don't think I really heard uh, whether there was any recommendations really which came out. So you might wish to work on this aspect where having completed the commendation, use your recommendations one, two, three, or as many as you would want. In fact, I would say that you went, you know, it, it's a little dicey here. Whenever you try to quote a quote, uh, I think you lost the essence of the quote or lost it halfway. And uh, you were uh, literally fumbling for words. Now, this is one recommendation which I have for most of you, whenever you are repeating the quote of a speaker, please make sure that you've got it right and you've got it at least almost in its entirety. Otherwise, it will fall flat and it will sort of dilute the whole impact of the essence of the quote. Uh, it was a very interesting quote. Everybody spoke about it, but please make sure that you get the entire sentence right. So here I would say that you could do better on the recommendations, which are almost absent. And also, I think the summary was not really taken care of. Go back, highlight the points that you commended and the recommendations and make it into a, the form of a summary. Toastmaster Sudha. Okay. A good opening, uh, good address, of course. Uh, that's that's a very smart uh, move, actually, I would say. When you address the audience, it gives you that bit of 5, 10, 15 seconds to structure your entire evaluation. So that's a good technique, I would say. You hit the nail on the head when you spoke about the fact that the contents were right up uh, there uh, with the speaker talking about vocal variety and body language and also putting a question to the audience. So you uh, told all of us how well the speaker got off to a good start and how much of variety he had in the contents in terms of vocal variety and body language. You also highlighted one more aspect of the speaker having a great vocabulary. In fact, uh, I think that was very important for me. That was a big takeaway from this speech, though, of course, there was one speaker who said that uh, the words used were complicated, yes. Uh, but overall, I think the great vocabulary that was used was well brought out by you in your commendations. As far as the recommendations were concerned, you had two recommendations. One was where you said, uh, the speech sounded a bit uh, monotonous, uh, perhaps a bit like uh, reading. And therefore, in those aspects, you could have put in a little bit of vocal variety. Now here, what you could have said, other than just saying it was monotonous, you could have pulled out one or two aspects of the speech and said how it could have been improved upon to make it less monotonous. So while stating the obvious fact, also try and give suggestions as to why it sounded and how it can be improved upon. All this, of course, you will have to ensure that it's done in that short span of 30 seconds to 45 seconds, which you have for the recommendation. And you also said that 
uh, it could have been elevated with an example, which again, I think you hit the nail on the head. The only recommendation for me to you uh, here would be that uh, while you covered the commendation and the recommendation aspects well, I think you fell short a little bit on the technique where you said that uh, there was no title to the speech. And uh, I thought, uh, yes, I, I know there was no title to the speech, but you could have said that it would have been nicer if the speech had had a title. Uh, at, in parts, you did sound a little uh, abrupt or brusque or whatever you wish to call. So you might wish to work on that aspect. Uh, and use words like it would have been nicer, it would have been better, okay? And uh, also summary could have been uh, much better done. You could have enlisted the, uh, the positives and the negatives once again. You almost uh, did not do a summary, I, I thought. So uh, you, like he said, spend about 30 seconds to 40 seconds uh, so that you repeat whatever you have mentioned earlier. So those would be my few two cents for you. Okay, uh, we go on to Toastmaster Akshay. Again, uh, I think all of you have mastered the technique of a good opening for your own evaluations by saying good afternoon, and it was a wonderful speech and things like that. Uh, the plus points that you highlighted were relating to the content where you said it was a good content, exuded yeah, in fact, you used the wrong word. I think you said exhumed confidence. It is not exhumed, it is exuded. Exhumed is virtually bringing a dead body out. So I think in the context that was not right. Um, and you were you said you were amazed by the depth. Before this, when you started this uh, evaluation where you said it was a wonderful speech. Now, uh, this was again a very mundane kind of an opening. Yes, we know wonderful, brilliant, uh, these are all very standard openings. So you might wish to change uh, the opening a little bit and make it more impactful. And then you also brought in uh, DTM Sudarshan into the picture. Uh, now remember, where it, when it is a contest, of course, you will have no reference to a DTM Sudarshan or, or anybody else, or even if you have listened to somebody. So try not to uh, refer to something which may not necessarily make sense in the context of a contest. You also spoke, uh, yeah, you gave a couple of recommendations where you said that there could be more passion in the speech, uh, more example. But again, what you did was uh, towards the end where you, were, uh, where you were supposed to summarize. In fact, again, in your case, there was no summary. And you said, yeah, I like the passion that you brought into the speech. So somewhere you were getting lost. Uh, you did not break up your evaluation into compartments. The first two were still all right, but towards the end, I think you lost the way a little bit. So try to compartmentalize your evaluations. Uh, you can always go back and forth, but there has to be a distinct structure. As much as you say, the speech should have a distinct structure. Uh, your evaluation also uh, should be uh, carrying a distinct structure. So just be mindful of that a little bit. Toastmaster Sarika, again, uh, she started off very well, uh, saying that you started off with a question. So she was virtually telling us, yes, how attentive a listener she has been in trying to understand how the speaker has started off. That's a, a very good sign because that also tells the judge that here is a, an evaluator who has listened very carefully. So you might get some brownie points there. Uh, it was a good start, you uh, you mentioned. You also spoke of uh, the usage of words. You mentioned that it was an informative speech. And what I liked uh, the most was you spoke about the humor element, which very few of the evaluators really uh, brought in. You spoke of audience awareness and you spoke of comfort. Now, while all this, these were quite relevant, uh, to your recommendations. I would suggest that you pick out the ones that really stood out. Like, for example, the humor, let's say the good usage, and the fact that informative and probably audience awareness. Keep it to three or four because you might otherwise lose the way in terms of time. And also when you highlight 
these specifics. When you say humor, maybe you can mention the that aspect of the speech which really made you feel that. So, so you are also attaching a context to the the commendations that you are giving, and that is only possible if you do not have too many commendations or appreciative things to say. You can just highlight three or four of those. In the recommendations, again, you did quite well where you said uh, that it was a slightly monotonous speech and it could have been enhanced through a personal example. I think that was a very uh, relevant recommendation. And you also mentioned that you could have started better. Uh, I don't know the context there, but yes, that also was a, a good uh, reference. And uh, the third aspect that I liked most was about your summary where you highlighted all that you uh, spoke about earlier. So, in fact, you really tested my uh, master evaluation uh, a, a little bit. You did very well. The one aspect that you can, this is a bit of a technical aspect where you, you said that you, you were referring to the speaker as you. Now, generally, what we uh, in the audience would like to say is the speaker, you know, rather than highlighting the you, which is all right at a club level, you know, but at, at the contest level, I would rather that you use the word the speaker. Uh, then you become a little more inclusive while at the same time not excluding the speaker. So this was a quite a small uh, kind of a thing. But I think overall uh, you did quite well. And I think you've got the gist of the evaluation and the flow. So well done on that. Toastmaster Ajay. Yeah. Okay. You were very, very appreciative of uh, the speaker, as uh, I'm sure uh, all of us should be. Uh, you said you have delivered a very good speech. Again, uh, my only uh, suggestion to you here is that, yes, you have delivered a very good speech. The vocal variety was good. The hand gestures were good. But somehow I felt that there was a little bit of depth that was missing because what aspects of... Uh, the vocal variety or the hand gestures were good. Were, 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 were it relating to any aspect or a particular phrase that was used or a particular emotion that was displayed by the speaker, somewhere you would need to be a little more specific. Like I'm, I'm going back to DTM Sudarshan where he said, be a little more specific. Generalized versions are fine, but they don't really give uh, that added value to a speaker. So you'll have to do a little bit on that. And you also mentioned everything was fabulous about the speech. Again, you, I think, generalized uh, a little bit where uh, it could have been more specific. And the recommendation you said, you uh, there was one recommendation which you did well. You said you did not pause. Again, while the recommendation was valid that you could have used pauses, what you could have perhaps said was at the end of the first part of the speech, when you had finished the vocal variety, you could have paused a little, waiting for all these points to sink into the audience and then started off on the aspect of body language. So you, you are telling the speaker how to use the pause as well. While recommending that a pause is good or essential, you can also tell him how this can be incorporated into the speech. So this part could have been uh, done better. And uh, you also use the word, my opinion. Now, again, uh, I would rather uh, say that do not use the word opinion. Uh, just keep avoid. My recommendation would have been a, a better word here. Because again, going back, it's not an opinion that you are giving. It's your recommendation. So uh, the summary, of course, was good in your case. Uh, but like I said, Try to be a little more specific uh, rather than uh, having a very generalized uh, evaluation. Yeah. Toastmaster Shreyans. Great. Okay. I think uh, you really nailed the opening, I would say. Uh, you made it very, very interesting. Like uh, somebody, Sudha, Toastmaster Sudha was saying, you know, sometimes evaluations can be boring. Uh, you know, the formats are the same. But you brought that element of surprise and I would say that element of interest where you said that some speeches have a lingering effect and that is what I, and you said something more. And that is what uh, I say about today's uh, speech. 
So you really gave it a nice, uh, fragrant, let us say, start to your evaluation. I, I really liked uh, that. And what I also liked is the, the one thing that we need to, uh, to really uh, be a little different from others was to bring out aspects which normally uh, many of us would not look into. You spoke about, I liked the fact that you were wearing formal clothes, the aesthetics of your background. Now, okay, this is a great observation, I would say, because while we you know, focus on the content structure, the, the rest of it, this also brings uh, the fact that your own observation skills and your listening skills are very high. So I think you really scored high marks uh, on that aspect, definitely. You went on to uh, mention about specific word usage. You also touched upon the fact, which again, one other, I think Toastmaster Sudha said, uh, the fact that the speaker connected parts of the speech with the scientific usage, like for example, the diaphragm. Again, that's uh, that exhibits your keen listening skills. And you also touched upon uh, very well on that. Recommendation again, you did uh, well. You said uh, the usage of pauses could have been there. Uh, and what I liked was your uh, ending, where you again said, good music happens between beats. So like I said, you did it so well. You know, it, for me, I was more fascinated by the way uh, you were putting words in your own evaluations. Uh, though I know I, I shouldn't be uh, get carried away by that, and maybe the some of the judges might be smart enough not to not to get carried away. But you really made it interesting. But here, the only thing that I would like to say was while you did all of this so nicely, I think you fell flat again on your summary. Maybe you got so carried away by your own evaluation that you forgot to really do a good summary. So remember, I think a lot of us have been missing out on the summary aspect because it carries fifteen marks. So try to uh, don't get carried away too much. And when you see the red light, tell yourself, hey, listen, I've, I've spoken enough. Now it's time for me to summarize. So try and tell yourself that and uh, get back uh, to ground reality. Yeah. Okay. Now we go on to Ashwin. Yes. Uh, again, a few uh, good commendations you had for uh, the speaker. You uh, specifically mentioned about the variations that the speaker had in his voice, uh, which again uh, was very good because uh, that itself tells you that the speaker was walking the talk. You literally said that. And you also spoke of the hand gestures though. Uh, and and uh, one important point that you came up with the recommendation is that, again, that you could have stood up and spoken. Now, I'm not saying that every speech has to be delivered standing uh, in a Zoom platform or it should be done sitting, but it was an observation or a recommendation which the speaker could definitely have listened to. Now, where you could have really improved or uh, done better on your evaluation is that you have to be very careful with your words. You said, I think you met your objective. Now, this was at the start of the speech. Now, when you say, I think you met your objectives, to me, as a judge, looks like this man is not very sure. Has the speaker met his objectives? Or, you know, it gives a bit of an uncertain feeling. So, so try not to use the word, I think, or I perhaps, but, you know, all these words are a little uh, negative. Now, another uh, phrase that you used was, a lot of things I like. Again, this is something which, lot of things, what, what lot of things? Never use the word lot of things. Instead of that, say, I like these aspects and then just drill it down to those one, two, three. So try to be very careful in the usage of phrases and sentences, which don't really mean much uh, for all of us and rather might give a slightly uh, negative effect for the person who is evaluating you. And again, go back to the same thing. I did not find much of a summary uh, on uh, what uh, you have spoken. So try to work on that. We come to Toastmaster Puja. 
Okay. Toastmaster Puja had a good opening, or at least it sounded good, where she said, I person personally learned a lot. Uh, you covered the topic well and things like that. Now, while these may sound uh, good, but I think you lose at least 15, 20, 30 seconds in trying to say this. Rather, I would say, use that time to be a little more specific. Make the opening just about 5 or 10 seconds, either in the form of an address, or you say it was such a scintillating speech that I was really blown away, and then get into your commendations straight away. You covered the commendations very well, where you said the speaker demonstrated vocal variety and used the body language effectively, and very apt quotes, because there were two quotes, so obviously you were moved by the quotes. Now, now, here again, while the commendations were good, they were not spelt out in depth, where you should pull out at least one aspect of the vocal variety, of the body language, which really touched you or moved you, so that the speaker gets to know that it's not a very general uh, uh, commendation. Uh, recommendations, there were three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. One was about uh, complicated words. You you touched upon the fact that uh, while the speaker used a lot of words, the word usage was good, but perhaps there were too many and some of them were a little complicated for comprehension. And you also spoke about the fact that the pauses were missing. Here again, pauses were missing. So how do you uh, improve upon those pauses? Again, it was a very generalized statement. But... What you did was your evaluation was wholesome. So what I liked was you really split it up into parts and you gave a good summary. You highlighted what you had said earlier. So overall, it was a pretty good evaluation. But if you can just uh, ensure that you get into your evaluation proper right up front without wasting too much of a time on the opening, unless, like I said, the opening is something which you can really shake up the audience with. Most of you have spoken about the fact that you were impacted well and uh, you liked it and you know all those things are very generalized. Try not to use that at least in a contest. In a normal club session, it is okay. The 10th evaluator. Oh, oh, I didn't know I had run nine marathons so far. Okay. Uh, that's uh, Virendra. Yeah. Now, here again, the one aspect, uh, probably he could have had a better opening, where he said, I will be evaluating Rakesh's speech today. I, I don't think uh, you need to do that. We, we know that. We know your name. We know the speaker. We know everyone else. So try to cut uh, that aspect of it. I know we are trying to buy time in the process, but uh, see if you can replace that with something better. Your opening, your commendations were, again, nice to sound. You said the speech was flamboyant, speech was flawless, speech was, speech was insightful, and you went on using these adjectives. So it, it told me that you know a lot of adjectives very well. But beyond that, what? You lost time again. So what were really the positives? What was flamboyant about the speech? What is it? Uh, that was flawless. What is it that was insightful? You could have highlighted some of those aspects. And you also said the gestures were good. The, vo the voice variety was good. So what happened was by the time you completed, I think you were almost at uh, maybe three minutes. Uh, but at the end of it, I, I really didn't know what was your specific uh, recommendations. Okay, you, as far as the positives are concerned, it's fine. You know, it's, it's no big deal. But it's really the recommendations according to me as a judge for me, which really moves me or makes me give that extra bit, you know, which differentiates one evaluator from the other. So while you may go wrong on the commendations and not really gone into the depth, like sometimes you also go overboard by repeating the uh, speech. So it's, it's sometimes a little, uh, be a little careful and try to highlight the recommendations because that's what will get you some extra points. And again, in the summary, 
well i don't uh, i don't think i heard much so i uh, try to work on that i think for me the way it's gone i think most of you have lost out on the summary aspect so that might need a little bit of work yeah and now on to our 11th and the final batsman of the t20 match uh, virender sorry not virender sehwag uh, it was vishal mehta <laughs> okay yeah he started off again with a very interesting opening uh, comparing uh, the speech to a to a cricket match and bringing in uh, toastmaster sehwag into the picture in fact i was wondering where he was going and somewhere he did manage to connect though of course uh, my, the first thing was uh, when he said you should have paused a little bit and then i didn't i, I didn't know that sehwag really paused anywhere i think sehwag is in full flow all the time so somewhere i think down the line you lost a little bit of that connect so be a little careful when you use the analogy and make sure that you can take it right through uh, till the end yeah but uh, the analogy per se was good it's, it's nice to use something like that yeah now again here uh, you had a lot of uh, you said a lot of do's and don'ts the good uh, but the commendations was i would say a little bit weak you didn't really highlight most of the aspects um, i i didn't really get much out of the commendation part the recommendation yes you had one where you spoke of the pauses so you could have added on at least one or even two more in fact uh, i think the real trick here is if you have three recommendations since i think you have 30 marks if i am not mistaken so if the judges really split the 30 marks into parts so if you do two they might give you 20 marks if you do three they might give you 30 some of the judges do that so you are on much safer ground if you give three recommendations as long as they are valid and strong so so try and uh, uh, develop or delve into that uh, much better summary again you said the uh, fab speech amazing potential now the one thing that uh, yeah i missed out somewhere yeah in your case you spoke about the speaker how uh, what an amazing potential he has got or is an amazing speaker and all that now this is where we need to be very careful do not bring the halo effect of the speaker into your speech or your evaluation we we want you to evaluate the speech do not get carried away by the halo effect of the speaker we want you to evaluate the speech of the day so that is one thing which i would recommend to all of you even if you have heard the speaker before uh, make sure that you are sticking to the speech the contents the structure and the rest of it my only uh, so so that completes my evaluation here the only thing that i would uh, a couple of things if uh, i don't know we are what 150 goodness me i've been talking so long okay uh the few things that you can also touch upon is while we highlight the content and the construction very well there are a lot of other skills in speaking which come into the picture like vocal variety body language but a lot of other hidden skills are transitions now sometimes a speech looks good but maybe the transition was not there nobody really touched upon that humor i think toastmaster sarika did that was one good aspect uh, audience engagement one or two of you did so try to bring a lot of other aspects of the speech other than just saying the contents were good the construction was good because this also indicates how good a listener you are all that i would say in summary is that stick to the crc method and the fact that the evaluation should be balanced in in terms of how you say it what you say and uh, when you say it i mean the timing of the evaluation itself and always remember that it is evaluation to motivate so make sure that everything is perfectly done yes to usma sudha has got something for me you show something oh, okay fine so i think yeah i think i have spoken enough i i don't know how much of uh, my master evaluation has helped you i do hope it has and uh, with that yes it's over to the master of ceremonies babu sir you have a glass of water next to you yes after after what i heard from dtm sudarshan 
I think I have. <laughs> I'm sure you have hyped, de, you know, <laughs> dehydrated yourself doing 11 uh, evaluations. Thank you so much. Over to you, yeah. Master of Ceremony. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you, Toastmaster Siddha. I, um, I'm I, not I going just to want to add, no, sorry, you. I just want to add one point to Babu, sir. That's what I said. He did a marathon sprint. That's why I used <laughs> both the words marathon and sprint. So it was a marathon of evaluations. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Today's meeting been. itself was a very Correct. different and a very it had a very different note to the to a normal Toastmasters meeting that we always yeah, have. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. We got a lot of things to learn and I think most of us here uh, have got personal evaluations, have got personal recommendations and uh, I think we're all going to work on that. Yes, <laughs> we need to give a certificate of appreciation <laughs> to Toastmaster Bob. But I'm not going to take a lot of uh, time because I think we're already surpassed too much of time. Yes. And everybody must be very hungry. So uh, I think we can move on to the awards and I'll pass it on to uh, Toastmaster Sudha for the conclusion. Uh, you will have to excuse me. I'm jumping on to another contest as a voting judge. So oh. we don't mind. It starts <laughs> at Abusar, soon. But you were superb. Just Abusar, one 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 you were just superb. One second. This is what we wanted you to be yes. much, uh, there to receive. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you so much, much Babu sir. Thank Always you. Always a pleasure to have you back, and uh, <laughs> the sincerity that you put into your role is amazing. And I mean, I I think it 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 speaks volumes about a leader like you. That's all I have got to say, because you don't take any any role which comes to you like you're going for a voting judge. And you've just finished a, a master evaluate. Anything which comes past you gets all the sincerity and passion with which you do it. And it's an example for all of us. If you're moving into leadership roles, this is what we all need to learn from Babu Sir. Apart from the evaluation uh, pearls of wisdom, which we love hearing from you all the time. And uh, really a pleasure to have you, uh, Babu Sir. Let's all put our hands together and uh, appreciate uh, the amount of time and effort that he's put in to make this session a very memorable one. And uh, I'm sure a stepping stone for all of us to do better at the contest level. I don't Thank have you so much for all your words. Uh, I, I, I would give the credit to only one entity, credit to Toastmasters. I think I am what I am because of Toastmasters. So I'm sure uh, uh, that that is something which all of you have in you and it's only a question of trying to bring it out. So thanks so much once again. And uh, all the best for the contest uh, next week. I may not be there because uh, Sarika 15th and 16th is a DOTP, which I didn't even realize. So we have two full days of uh, oh uh, district uh, training. So, uh, But I'll try and See if we can, you know, uh, yeah, work we need, something out. Uh, yeah. We need some role players to be filled sure, up. Sure, sure. Yeah. We'll have to, unfortunately, yeah. again, move it to the next week in which we yeah. don't want. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, thanks want... then. I'll drop out. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank thanks, you. Babu, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Babu, sir. Thank you. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. thank you, Babu, sir. Thank you. So please uh, get prepared for your evaluations. And if anyone here is doing their ISC as well, if you want uh, to attend meetings um, uh, for getting a taste of contest, I've been putting it up. I think Sarika has also been putting up some uh, notes for you all. So please go ahead, attend them, get a flavor of it and uh, just participate. That's it. I mean, there's no other uh, uh, way of learning. Yeah. Thank you and uh, have a good rest of Sunday. Rakesh, uh, just amazing one. speech. I do, sorry. Amazing speech. Uh, Thank it's you. It's always a pleasure to hear you. And uh, like uh, uh, Vishal said, uh, you are a Virendra Sevag always, and you really come onto the stage and you start, you know, your sixes and your fours. And uh, uh, very Thank good. You. I mean, some few things which you need to just uh, pick sure. up uh, along the way. I'm sure you have just started and you're doing brilliant already. Already, uh, so I'm sure. Uh, we'll see great speeches from you and I want you to participate in IC the next time for sure. Please finish your level two before that. Yeah. Thank Don't you. Uh, yeah. Just one Thank small you. announcement. Uh, uh, so uh, next week is our contest. So everybody please participate. Rakesh, if you also want to participate, uh, the, the floor is still open. 
and people who are not participating please take up the role because we need two timers we need two sa we need two zoom masters because there will be breakout rooms so today you got a flavor of how the contest work and similarly we need lot of role players for that so if you all are not participating please let's get this contact uh, contest a big success so please participate in other role players we are going to shoot out the list of role players that we require and uh, yeah so please participate and the first preference of course do participate in the evaluation contest and if not then do take up the role absolutely i agree with you great and have a great okay, sunday okay thank afternoon. you